College Football Primetime on ESPN2 is brought to you in stunning high definition by Phillips. Iowa State might be looking ahead to the Big 12 schedule. But to be a champion, your stars have to shine everywhere. Tonight, the Cyclones take on more than a football team. Men who wear many different uniforms. <laughs> they stand in the way of what Iowa State hopes will be a march to an undefeated regular season. West Point, home of the United States Military Academy. Tonight, Army in search of its first win in 2005. Host number 22, Iowa State, a record of 2-0. The Cyclones have not played since knocking off Iowa two weeks ago. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Pash. Well, many will tell you that to win in college football, you have to have character and characters. To that point, Iowa State head coach Dan McCarney was so revered that despite 13 wins in his first five years combined, he was given a second chance and since led the Cyclones to four bowl games and a Big 12 North title last year. They could be a surprise again this year. They don't play Texas. They don't play Oklahoma. And many feel if McCarney and the Cyclones play as well as they did two weeks ago against Iowa, they could run the table. But McCarney says that this is a business trip and he's not looking past Army. And the reason he's saying that, Rod Gilmore, is because of the deep admiration he has for the character of the Army football players and out of respect for head coach Bobby Ross. You know, Bobby Ross has always been an Army man. I mean, this is a guy who went to military high school before going to Virginia Military Institute for college. He got his first coaching job, head coaching job, at the Citadel. He was still an Army man. And then he went on to have great success at Maryland and Georgia Tech. But all the while he was doing that and being in the NFL, he had his eyes on the Army Academy. Why? Well, his father had an appointment to Army, but was unable to go there because of the Depression. He always wanted to get back here. And he is finally back here trying to mold this team the way he wants it to be. And Trevor, there's no doubt that he wants to be at Army. I, I assume that there's no doubt there's some guys who want to be at Iowa State. Yeah, all of them, and one in particular, defensive end Jason Berryman. He started out spectacularly, freshman year, Big 12 defensive newcomer of the year, but then ran afoul of the law. Assault, vandalism, spent almost a year in jail. Everyone thought that he would leave and rehabilitate his reputation and character elsewhere, but he wanted to stay. And Coach Dan McCarney allowed him, one of his best players, to rehabilitate that character right here where it all started at Iowa State. So Berryman and the Cyclones looking for their third win this season in three tries. Army looking for win number one. And it seems like everywhere we go, we find student athletes impacted by the hurricanes in the Gulf Coast. West Point, no exception. Stacy will have more on that. When we return to Army, which has won three national titles, it would settle for a win tonight. And welcome back to Mikey Stadium in West Point. Iowa State taking on Army. And normally there are very many distractions for an Army football player. And there's one more for one cadet in particular, Trey Moran. And with more on that story, here is the fourth member of our crew, Stacy Dale Schumann. Thanks, Dave. You know, there are two major trials really weighing on the heavy minds of Americans right now, that being the war in Iraq and the other being the devastation we're seeing with the hurricanes in the south. But for one Army player, backup center Trey Moran, that couldn't be more the case. Well, Trey lives through the elements of war every day here at the Academy. He comes from Metier, Louisiana, just 10 minutes outside of New Orleans. And, you know, though his home was remarkably intact after the hurricane and his family safe, the devastation that occurred has weighed heavy on his mind more than anything. He told me not only is the place that I grew up devastated, but it has hurt the people that I represent, the citizens of the United States. Guys, he's the quintessential example of what it means to be an American, and he might be small on the offensive line but he certainly has a huge heart Dave all right Stacy Metairie Louisiana very close uh, as they said to New Orleans and uh, so many Americans impacted by Hurricane Katrina and now Hurricane Rita including uh, many from the state of Texas on these two teams here tonight as you look at Bobby Ross in his second year at Army 
He is four wins shy of 100 as a college head coach, won a national championship at Georgia Tech. Played for John McKenna at VMI. Still talks to John weekly. John, 91 years old and been a mentor. And Dan McCarney's mentor, Hayden Fry, one of many, Barry Alvarez, Kirk Ferentz, Dan McCarney, who coached with Hayden Fry at Iowa. McCarney also under Barry Alvarez at Wisconsin in his 11th year at Iowa State. And guys, we've had a chance to take in the academy here over the last 36 hours, and this is truly remarkable, this place, isn't it? Just the scenery. It's unlike any place in college football. I'd heard about it, but I hadn't been here before. It is incredibly beautiful. I mean, it just, it's breathtaking when you come through the gates. And even without its history, it's breathtaking. But when you add to it the men that have passed through and women and what they have done in service of our country, Dwight Eisenhower and Douglas MacArthur, these men, these women add so much to this beauty. Scott Wesley ready to take the kick from Tony Yelp. Iowa State has won the toss and will defer, so Army will start with the football. And Wesley's going to run it out despite being seven yards deep. And he gets up to the 20-yard line before he is stacked up. John Machado leading the way for Iowa State. Zach Dahman, a senior from Fort Worth, Texas. He is 81 yards away from becoming the all-time leading passer. He already holds several passing records at Army. You think he's 160 pounds? I mean, we looked at him yesterday, and he certainly wasn't 175. I think he's 160, 165. He may be the smallest Division I quarterback I've ever seen, or the lightest anyway. And this is a very small football team, especially up front. More on that coming up. First down for Army from its 19-yard line. And Carlton Jones gets the touch on the opening play, and he's dragged down from behind by Berryman, who we mentioned in the open. Well, Carlton Jones has all but one rushing yard for Army this year. Mike Vitti, a pretty good fullback. Ulikowski, the tight end. And Murphy and Trimble, the wide receivers for Army. Undersized offensive line and only one returning starter. That's Pete Beer, and he started at guard last year. Joined by Evans, Collier, Weisner, and Conan this year on the offensive line. Second down and nine. And Jones again. And up to about the 22 before he's grabbed by LaMarcus Hicks. Now we mentioned Berryman on the defensive line for Iowa State. Big 12 newcomer of the year two years ago. There's some other good players up there. Sean Moorhead, Nick Leaders, and Brent Curvey, who the Army coaches are very impressed with. And the linebacking core, Tim Dobbins, Big 12 newcomer of the year last year, along with Carper and Robertson. And the two quarterbacks have accounted for four turnovers uh, against Iowa, Jackson and Hicks and Paris and Moser are the safeties. And you look at Dobbins, a very solid middle linebacker. And on third down and seven, Dobbins going to dump it off to Jones. And he's got some green in front of him. Past the 40. And all the way up to the 48-yard line. This is an important part of Army's game plan for this game to get short passes to complement the run. They ran it up the middle the first two times, then play-action pass and a screen off of play-action pass. That's a nice wrinkle. And this man, Carlton Jones, doesn't have breakaway speed, but look how nobody catches him from behind. The guys that tackle him are in front of him. 27-yard gain for the all-time leading receiver by a running back at Army, the Henderson, North Carolina native Carlton Jones. From the 49 of Army, first down. And Jones is going to throw. And he's got a man, but it's broken up and intercepted by Steve Paris. And Paris up to the 35-yard line before Corey Anderson makes the tackle. Anderson was open, but the pass by Jones a little bit shy and intercepted by Paris, his second pick of the year. Well, there's enough blame to go around on this one. The ball is late, and it's behind, but then you don't get enough out of Anderson at the end here. He's got a chance to make the play, but Paris outleaps him for the ball there. I do like the call, though. An aggressive call to make a play. The play was there to be made. It's that Anderson is their fastest receiver, and he outran the ball a little bit. So Iowa State takes over at its 35-yard line. Play fake. 
and Meyer, an excellent thrower on the run, just gets rid of it out of play. Meyer, a sophomore, MVP in the Independence Bowl last year, a win over Miami of Ohio, rushed for 122 yards in that game. Elected captain, guys, as a sophomore. He's a guy who came on, was not expected to be the starting quarterback. He actually competed with Austin Flynn. Flynn started six games last year, and he won out as the season wore along. Flynn was the full-time starter two years ago and has been moved to wide receiver. And four wide here. And the pass caught by Sumrall. And he gets thrilled and then gang tackled at the 37-yard line. Caleb Campbell leading the charge for Army. Iowa State, very good skill people. Stevie Hicks over 1,000 yards last year. Cook is the fullback. Blythe Davis and Barkema Nickel, a couple of tight ends. Egbers, Penn, Stevenson, Zare, and Brandt, the offensive line for Iowa State. And what a return to college football for Todd Blythe. Injured and underwent an ACL surgery in February. And he's back on the field here in September on third and eight. Meyer has a man over the middle. Great stick in the open field as Flynn pulls it in. And he is going to be short of the first down. Oh, Barrett Scruggs was all over him. Number 55. He just sat in the middle of the field, waited for his zone to be completed. Didn't run out of it. Now watch, you'll see him show up in a hurry. Here comes the fight. Bam! Oh, that's showing up. And so a punting situation for Troy Blankenship, who kicked three balls inside the Iowa 20 two weeks ago in a 23-3 win. Wesley back to return the punt. From the 15. Great block, and Wesley is tripped up and brought down to the 24-yard line. Iowa State knew that Army was going to be physical. Taylor Justice with a huge block. And a return of eight yards after a 40-yard punt. And you talk about Army being physical. Bobby Ross has always had physical teams. He had a physical team at Georgia Tech. Had him in the NFL. You want physical football? He's bringing that right now to Army. <laughs> Welcome back to West Point. Army taking on Iowa State. No score. Army turned it over early. Iowa State got it. And three and out. Had to put it away. Now Army has it at the 23-yard line. Carlton Jones has touched it a lot. Even threw a pass so far in this game. Iowa State brings the safety into the box. And down with the pump. And looking long, and he's got Anderson. The pass is just out of his outstretched arms, incomplete. Boy, he beat Jackson. Well, they got what they wanted. They went to a double tight end formation to give themselves extra time to throw the ball. Because Army's had trouble protecting the quarterback. And they get Anderson out there, they get him open, and then they don't hit the pass. That's got to be really frustrating. One of the reasons that this was important to hit was because they took a deep drop and a long pass. They won't try that many times with Jason Berriman chasing the quarterback. Some would say in a game like this against a ranked team, you got to hit on those plays to beat them. Here's second down and 10. Jones cutting it back and getting decent yardage, gained of about four yards. And tackled by Jason Berryman. Well, Berryman's unblocked on this play. They think that they'll be able to run it up there before he can close it down, but he is so fast, he gets in there and makes the tackle. And if he doesn't, it's another four or five yard gain for Jones. Well, I'm surprised that Berryman is still at Iowa State. I'm surprised he chose to stay there given the troubles that he's had. When you think about it, it's kind of surprising that Iowa State allowed him to remain. McCarney was a little bit surprised that Berryman returned after being jailed for eight months on theft and assault convictions and Gauman in trouble here on third down gets rid of it as he is hit and another interception two interceptions already for Steve Paris and Paris finally knocked out a play on the far side at the 30 there is a penalty flag down but it was thrown on the return two interceptions thrown by Army football players in four minutes and 29 seconds we have ACC officials today Jack Childress is the referee and that was on the return so it will be Iowa State football 
Well, Dahlman panics here. He doesn't have anybody open, and he just throws the ball up. He gets flushed out of the pocket, and you need a little During bit more composure. Return, there was an illegal block in the back, number 52 of the return team, 10 yards from the end of the run, first down. And Dahlman's trying to make something happen. You see, he's got nothing. He had time there, gets a little flustered, and just throws it up. But where this ball needs to drop is right on the sideline to allow Anderson to adjust to the outside. Because he didn't get set and hit as he threw, he ended up throwing it too far inside, and Paris just sat on it. He threw that into a double zone. There's no way he throws that ball. Nine takeaways in two games and four and a half minutes for Iowa State's defense. As Stevie Hicks takes it to the 34-yard line, Caleb Campbell on the tackle. That's a gain of about six yards. Army has an undersized defensive line. Seth Lotz is about 238 pounds, joined by Fusco, Brandon Thompson, and Cameron Craig. Three new starters at linebacker this year as they've gone from a 4-2-5 to a 4-3 scheme, Schrode, Scruggs, and Rockwood, and then in the secondary, both the corners, Tarver and Stiff, are captains. Rob Davis and Caleb Campbell are the safeties. After the five-year pickup at second down. It'll be Hicks again, and he can't slip a tackle, brought down in the backfield. Charlie Rockwood on the play for Army. This is a little bit surprising because Iowa State has a big advantage up front. You see Dahman getting a little bit of information on that last pick on the sideline. They are a lot bigger than the Army front. Army even has a defensive lineman, Cameron Craig, who's about 240 pounds, facing a 300-pound lineman. And they also have lots, we mentioned, at 238, going up against the left guard for Iowa State, Corey Pence, who is 315 pounds. Third and eight, Army would love two straight three and outs after turnovers. As the catch is made by Davis, awfully close to the marker at the 30-yard line. Looks like he's going to be a little bit short. Yeah, stiff on the tackle, and it'll be fourth down. And if you're Dan McCartney, do you go for it here in fourth and short? Well, unless you've got a golden kicker who you want to take the three points with, I think with your big offensive line, your big size advantage, and your, your idea that you're going to come in and be physical, you go for it here. You're on the 31-yard line. That's what they're going to do. Got to get to the 29-yard line as you look at uh, even 47 and 72 for McCartney. Doesn't do justice to what he's done over the last five years. Two years ago, they didn't win a Big 12 game. They won four last year. And they've got the first down easily as Cook hammers past the 27 to the 26-yard line. Now, we mentioned in the Open that Iowa State does not play Texas, does not play Oklahoma either this year. They do play next week at Nebraska and also play at Missouri, the team that kept Iowa State from winning the North outright last year. And then also a Colorado and at Texas A&M, a tough game as well. Well, and the concern for McCartney was let down because they have Nebraska next week and they just knocked off Iowa. It'll be Hicks on the inside, handoff out of the shotgun to the 22. That's a four-yard gain. And Tony Fusco with a tackle for Army. Well, Army is so much smaller than Iowa State. And so what they plan to do is stunt and twist that defensive line so they don't have to stand in front of those huge Iowa State offensive linemen and just take the pounding. Good way through the first quarter. Second and six coming up for Iowa State. We'll see a lot of Meyer in the shotgun and a lot of him under center. A dangerous runner. Very good thrower while he's running. Goes on the run with a bootleg that Army said they were worried about. And a nice open field tackle after the catch is made by the tight end Barkema at the 15 yard line. Rob Davis on the stop, and that's going to be a first down. Iowa State, enrollment of just over 26,000 with notable graduates, including George Washington Carver, founded in 1858 in Ames, Iowa. We wonder. How many people around Iowa and the country know that you can just do lots of things with peanuts? George Washington Carver, huh? <laughs> and corn in Iowa as well. Stacked up at the line is Hicks. Good defense there. Rockwood is the leader there on that charge. I guess what a lot of people in Iowa want to know about Iowa State is how good are they? They knocked off Iowa, a team that many people thought would win the Big Ten. Still might. And can Iowa State get on a run? You saw their schedule. 
Do they have a chance to win the North? I think they're probably good enough for that, but do they have a chance to really get into the national consciousness of the BCS race? Second and ten. And here we see Meyer out of the gun. Everybody's covered. And Meyer did well to get back to right around the line of scrimmage. Tripped up by Brandon Thompson, who the Army defensive coaches really like. Third down, third down. Dad, a uh, former lieutenant colonel in the National Guard. Well, as you talk about how good is Iowa State, they knock off Iowa, but they did it in convincing fashion. Dan McCartney's defense especially, they held Iowa to the lowest point total since 1910 with just three points. Well, that's because they knocked Drew Tate out of the ball game. And they go five wide. Meyer four out of five throwing so far. Looking for the end zone. What a catch! And a touchdown. Austin Flynn, a converted quarterback, makes a miraculous grab, and Iowa State is on the board first. Well, Flynn runs a nice route. He's the inside receiver, circles around the linebacker, and gives space to Meyer to find him. He's able to show his numbers to him. See all the room he has there. That's right, Rod. He circled around the linebacker, then came inside toward the center of the field to give a clear shot where the linebacker wouldn't interfere. Extra point. And it's 7-0 Iowa State. So they were able to convert that second turnover into a touchdown. Culbertson hits the PAT. Third touchdown pass of the year for Meyer. Second TD catch for Flynn. 7-0 Iowa State. ESPN2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Jeep. Trail-rated capability. Only in a Jeep 4x4. Only the fourth night game ever at Mikey Stadium. Army 3-0, but not off to a good start here. Down 7-0 after turning it over twice. Iowa State's defense has forced nine turnovers already this season. And Brett Meyer with a touchdown pass. So it's 7-0. Yelp to boot it away. And Wesley to return. be a touchback army will start at the 20-yard line now he mentioned Jason Berryman who missed all of last year was jailed for eight months because of theft and assault and ended up paying his own way through summer school earned passing grades and then was reinstated because of that along with the fact that he attended some anger management courses and performed community service well the theft and assault was mugging a a student and stealing four dollars and also taking a cell phone from another student which resulted in the university suspending him but he's back here starting and having a good year so far for iowa state the backup scott wesley on the carry and he gets about seven to the 27 yard line so, trevor a, a lot of schools would not even allow a guy with that kind of a, a violent crime occurring to come back at all Berryman wanted to come back. Like I said, a lot of schools would just say, you can't do that. What do you think about it? Well, I think it surprised even Dan McCartney and all of Iowa State that he wanted to come back. And so Dan McCartney put him through a ringer and made him prove that he deserved it. So if Berryman makes a play here on second and four, he's lined up with the left end on this play. A bobble of the snap. Berryman coming and Dominic gets it away to beat him. It's a first down for Army. With more on... Mr. Jason Berryman, who got in the face of the quarterback on that play. Let's check in with Stacy. Yeah, Dave, I talked to Berryman, and he told me his main reason for returning, as hard as it was, was simply loyalty. He said universities and coaches, they invest in you as athletes to come and stay true to their program, stay loyal to you. He felt he should do the same and wanted to stay loyal to his team, to his community, and really just make a right, a, a wrong, a right. Now he's put on about 25 pounds, up to about 250, 255 since his freshman year two years ago. He's still a sophomore and has three years of eligibility remaining, including this year. Again on the carry is Wesley to this side of the field. Not much there, minimal gain. Tackled by Tim Dobbins, the 12 newcomer of the year last year on defense. 
Well, Berryman spent those eight months in jail. And when you look at turnovers and points off turnovers, I mean, Iowa State's defense has so much to do with explosive players like him, but he wouldn't have been allowed back had he not done the things Coach McCarney told him to do. As he sat in jail, he said that he became very humble and realized what he was missing and what he had lost and was determined to get it back. Second down and on. Reverse coming to Hill. Breaks a tackle at the 35. Very close to the first down. Looks like he'll have it at the 44-yard line. Make that Corey Anderson on the reverse. They have tried to get him involved. They think he's got terrific speed. They've thrown a couple of deep balls to him, and they finally uh, get it in his hands here on the reverse. Well, they've made a concerted effort to get him loose in this ball game. They've thrown deep to him twice. They use the reverse now. He's the quickest guy on the offense. They're trying to find a way to match Iowa State's speed and to get a couple of big plays. They need some big plays. The second time, Army has already been right around midfield from the 44. Play fake and Domin on the roll up. Throws a bullet to Murphy for the first down at the 40 yard line. Well, Domin may be about 160, 165 pounds, but showed good arm strength on that throw, 16 yard game. Well, take a look at what Iowa State's defense is doing. Look at all this cushion way up here at the top. There's nobody underneath in an underneath zone. They don't think that Domin can beat him with his arm. And this is Domin making a statement. And if Iowa State allows this to happen all game, Army's going to move the ball. In Iowa State territory at the 40-yard line. They had four drives inside the Baylor 30 last week and only came up with three points, and that was on a 49-yard field goal. Domin looking for Murphy again, the go-to receiver last year, and he's inside the 25 and out of bounds near the 20. DeMarcus Hicks pushed it out. Army on the cusp of the red zone, trying to bounce back and tie the game. But Trevor, you made a good point on that last play. They're continuing to play quarter coverage where you play a deep quarter of the field or a half to the other side, and they're too far off. They're giving a lot of room, and all you need is three steps. Three steps, stop, take the seven yards that they give you, and then run with the ball. The reason is that Iowa State doesn't think Army can pass consistently. They want to try to stop the run. From the 21 of Iowa State, Wesley trying to get the corner, and he's cut down nicely by Hicks. That's a gain of about one. It'll bring up second down and long. Well, you see the block by fullback Mike Vitti. He just drove, absolutely drove his man, Matt Robertson, into the ground. This is one of the toughest guys on the team. Look at the fullback now. Watch him hit Robertson. He's going to come around, and he's going to hit right there and drives him back and then says, hey, I'm going to push you into the ground with my arm if I can't step on you. Kevin Ross, the Army offensive coordinator, talked very highly about Vitti's strength. He benched 400 pounds at the age of 16. Domin setting up the screen. Wesley inside the 10. Touchdown, Army! and a 19-yard screen pass for a touchdown to Scott Wesley. And Joe Riley on for the extra point. Nice formation. Yeah. And he'll move over to the center of the football. So an Army team that right now is 112th in the country, averaging just over eight points per game. Has six right now. High snap. But the extra point good, and now seven to tie the game. You just never know on a Friday night, do you? Two weeks ago, we saw Ohio knock off hit. We had double overtime, a four and a half hour game last Friday. What will happen tonight in West Point? We're tied at seven, late first. And welcome back to Army. Private Pash, Private Gilmore, Trevor Maddich. Uh, I'm a sergeant, don't call me an officer. 7-7 game with 2.22 remaining. Stacy Dale Schumann with us as well. Glad you are with us from West Point. Raucous crowd is always here. 
at venerable Mikey Stadium in its 82nd year hosting its first ever Friday night game. Koenig will boot it away for Army and Flynn and Jackson are back for Iowa State. Eight play, 80 yard drive, three minutes and 20 seconds. Zach Domino was perfect passing on that drive. Four out of four, 67 yards and a touchdown to tie the game. Army's turned it over twice, but we are top. And Flynn, who scored the Iowa State touchdown, has it at the 10. Tripped up at the 15 and stumbles to the 20 yard line. Hey, let's go back to that touchdown on that screen pass. Trevor, we got ourselves a convoy. Just watch the offensive lineman in there as they turn, let him go, and now they release. Now you got three, four linemen ready to provide blocks, and then down the field, Scott Wesley's also going to get a little help from Walter Hill, number two, blocking right there. That's a big old convoy with a great big alley. Yeah, it's one thing to get screen blocking at the point of attack, but to have four guys at the goal line throwing blocks is amazing. It'll be Hicks straight ahead and gets five yards before Caleb Campbell wraps him up for Army. And with that touchdown pass and the yardage for Dominic, the all-time leading passer in Army history. And you see him there. He was, as a child, nicknamed Opie. And I guess he does look a little bit like a young Richie Cunningham. He's got the red head, you know, and uh, he's thin. I think we had him listed at 160 pounds, and that might have been dripping wet with shoulder pads on yesterday. Well, that's if he eats the wrapper with the MRE. <laughs> Second down of the 26. Hicks has the first down past the 31. Tackled by Rockwood again. And Hicks is banged up, and he gets uh, just about every carry for Iowa State. He's going to hobble off, but he appears to be all right. Well, Monday night on ESPN2, the state of Louisiana takes a big step forward as the region continues the long road of recovery. LSU will return home after the emotional win at Arizona State and take on Tennessee. Join ESPN2 for the first major sporting event in the state since Hurricane Katrina devastated the area last month. And now Hurricane Rita, which is on the cusp of the Louisiana-Texas border. First down for Iowa State. Flynn on the screen. Got a great block from Blythe and gets about nine yards to the 41. Randy Chastain with a tackle. We mentioned uh, Hurricane Rita is approaching, and here are the games that are postponed because of that, including Tennessee and LSU. Game moved from tomorrow night, originally scheduled, to Monday, 7.30 ESPN2. And that's only for now. I mean, you know, Rita hasn't hit yet. Supposed to hit later tonight or early tomorrow morning, and who knows what the impact of that will be. Just, just horrible for the people of New Orleans who moved to Houston and have to go through that again. Has been downgraded to a Category 3 hurricane as Greg Coleman rips through the secondary. There is a penalty flag down. Well, Rita is not going to hit New Orleans directly, but it's already causing a lot of devastation there with the rain. Already some of the levees have broken and certain parts of New Orleans are flooding again. Let's get the call here. They're holding against Iowa State. Well, Houston's team planned a bus to Shepherd's Air Force Base, but they didn't have any bus drivers. They could not find a charter to get to Tulsa where they have to play next week. They've already postponed this week's game. And they eventually found a bus and drove Holding 500 miles. 72 of the offense, the penalty is 10 yards with three second down. That's on Corey Pencil left guard, but they're going to stay in Tulsa now until the game next weekend. Well, that's okay. I mean, because I think those buses were being used for the right thing. I mean, considering how you couldn't get people out of New Orleans, mm -hmm. now you have a chance. And if it means taking a charter or two away from a football team, we can live with that. Rice also located in Houston, not moving. It's game postponed against Navy for Saturday. Meyer, and the receiver's covered. Army doing a good job in the secondary. Meyer, as we mentioned, in danger to run. It only gets about three or four. Pushed out by Prey. You okay? Did you get That didn't hit you. You all right? End of the first quarter. A quick quarter. Wow, I was shocked after four and a half hours last Friday. We're tied at seven. The barracks at United States Military Academy. 
Once a football powerhouse, Army, three-time national champion in the 40s, just trying to get back to respectability. Pretty respectable right now. And as they're tied with Iowa State, but Blythe makes the grab and gets the Iowa State first down to move his sticks here. I, I don't get that. Anytime you get an empty backfield, five receivers out there, as a corner or safety, you have to know it's going to be a quick pass. There's no reason to back up. You know they need to pick up a first down. You got to settle. Good job by Flynn of getting his body in between the defensive back and the ball so he can pick up a first down. There's an incredible height advantage for Todd Blythe over the Army corners. He's six inches taller than Deion Carver, eight inches taller than Ray Stiff. Meyer to the air again. And letting it go deep for Blythe. And it's intercepted as Blythe couldn't hang on to it. Ray Stiff with the football. Stiff all the way up to the 43 before the quarterback, Brett Meyer, makes the tackle. Army football. Wow, look at the way this ball comes off of Blythe's shoulder and it gets picked off. That's just a really unusual play. You don't expect to see that very often, do you? No, you don't. The ball came and hit him kind of in the shoulder pad. Hard game for the 29. A wild one last year as well against Cincinnati. Jared Ulikowski with an unbelievable catch. The SB play of the year in college football as Army ended. We've longest. seen another example of an Army man being prepared. This time, it's not Ulikowski, it's Ray Stipp, who never gives up and is there for the bobble. And maybe that'll be the play of the year this time around instead of Ulikowski's from last year. Their win over Cincinnati last year ended a 19-game skid. They went 2-9 and nine last year, 0-2 oh this year. Jones cutting it back. He's got some blockers in front. But the Cyclones catch up to him at midfield. About seven yards there before Hicks makes the tackle. Well, Bobby, Bobby Ross in his second year uh, at the helm at Army, guys, and he's gotten it done everywhere he's been. Maryland, three ACC championships. Georgia Tech, tied for a national championship. San Diego, they went to the Super Bowl. Had two playoff seasons in Detroit before resigning midway through the 2000 campaign for health reasons. Can one coach make that much of a difference at a school like Army that has not won a lot of football games over the last decade? Watch your answers after this play. Jones on second down. Spun down to the 45. He's got the first down. Game of six. Yeah, well, I think he can. As long as it's the right match at the right time. There's some question whether Bill Callahan might be the right coach with his West Coast offense in Nebraska, but Bobby Ross is military all the way. He went to Benedictine, a Catholic military academy in high school in Richmond, Virginia. He attended VMI in college. His first head coaching job was at the Citadel. He's got one son graduated from Navy, another graduated from Air Force, and he's got a son-in-law who's in the Navy in Iraq right now. Beatty going nowhere stood up by Tim Dobbins and company and the ball may have come out that's what Iowa State is saying but was forward progress stopped no signal yet we do not have replay here tonight because Army is an independent school and Army and Iowa State did not agree on whether to use replay and the officials are still talking about it it's going to stay Army football forward progress stopped there at the 44. Well, following up on, on Trevor's point about Bobby Ross, can one coach make a difference? I don't think one coach can here at Army, but I think he's got the other pieces in place to make that happen. He's getting a lot of support from his new athletic director, Kevin Anderson, came over from Oregon State. They're changing the schedule. You know, they're, they're trying to make a more balanced schedule for them to play as an independent. On second down, Domin. Incomplete. Time once again for Corey Anderson deep to bring a third long. They're changing the schedule, which any coach will tell you is a very important thing. And then finally, they're changing the facilities. They built a new weight room a couple years ago. They've got an indoor facility coming up uh, next year. They're going to start on that later this year. So I think the other pieces are there to support Bobby Ross to make it happen so he can turn things around here at Army. And because of his military background and the success he's had at the college and pro level, he has the credibility to, to say what changes need to be made and then to have those things followed through. 
Third and nine at the 44 of Iowa State. This is the third time Army has been inside the 50-yard line. Dobbins pass batted down by Dobbins who came roaring into the backfield. It'll be fourth down. And you talk about Dobbins roaring into the backfield. He roared onto the scene last season for Iowa State, a J.C. transfer, and he essentially made the defense for them last year. They had a gaping hole. He came in, had a big year, and he makes all the difference in the world for the Cyclones' defense. Owen Tolson on to punt it away. And Baum back to receive for Iowa State, standing inside his 10-yard line. Snap a little bit wide, but Tolson gets it. And it takes an army bounce. The Black Knights down it at the five-yard line. Darren Newsom down there. 39-yard punt, no return. Iowa State will take over at its five-yard line. We're tied at seven. Early second in West Point. And welcome back to West Point, the mess hall. Where right now... There's nobody because they're all here watching this football game with good reason. We are tied at seven early second quarter. And, you know, guys, we talked about Bobby Ross and whether one man can make that much of a difference. He's got a lot of challenges here. He, obviously, time is restrained at most schools as Hicks is back in the game and takes it up to the nine-yard line. But more so at Army because of all the other commitments that the cadets have. Well, one of the commitments is really what happens in the summer. You know, most schools allow their players to just be involved with football and get ready. But these guys have military training, and it's hard for them to keep weight on during the summer when they're going through that. And that's why the mess hall is so important. They get double rashes in the mess hall, and when they're on their summer training, they teach them to eat MREs, meals ready to eat, those foil pouch meals, on the run as fast as they can. Out of the shotgun on second down. As Davis all along on the sideline, up to around the 18-yard line. As you see, seven Black Knights come over to make the tackle. A signature of this Army defense led by defensive coordinator John Mumford. You know, talking to Bobby Ross yesterday about the dilemma of getting guys to maintain weight. He says, you know, when you recruit guys. You know, in most schools, you can assume a guy is going to put on 25 pounds, you know, 15 pounds, whatever it is. But he says you can't make that assumption here at Army because of the commitments in the summer. Well, the meeting times are shortened. They get about 20 minutes in the morning, around, well, actually around lunchtime, about 20 minutes, and 30 minutes before practice. And some kids are taking a 19, 20 hours. You can't even get them into the training room. As Meyer might need the training room if he keeps going down like that. Sacked back at the 15-yard line. Jason Schrode on the play. Luke Pell also there for Army. Well, here you see the rollout to buy time, but continuous, continuous effort right up front there by Schrode makes the play. So second down and 13 at the Iowa State 15-yard line. Well, this defense is starting to settle in and get a little grasp of what Iowa State's doing here. Army was dead last in total defense a year ago, 83rd in the country, which is about 30 spots better this year. Meyer taking off. And Meyer's going to be very close to the first down of the 27-yard line. Pell finally wraps him up. Last year, Meyer had over 120 yards in the Independence Bowl. When you talk about the, the difficulty in keeping weight on the freshmen and sophomores, every summer about 40 Army players go to Fort Sill in Oklahoma, home of field artillery, home of the big gun, to spend time training. And Bobby Ross has taken to sending a member of the strength and conditioning staff out there, upgrading the Fort Sill weight room. And while they do their Army training in the summer, they also get weight training for football. They mark Meyer a yard shy of the first down. Meyer keeps on the option, and he is stood up short. He lost the yard of the play. Tommy Ryan, one of those bigger defensive linemen, comes up with the play. Let's go down the sideline and check in with Stacy. All right, we'll uh, get to Stacy in a moment. Well, I'm sure Stacy is probably signing more autographs, you know. Well, guys, hey. I got a little hungry over here on the sideline, and I had to snatch me up a, an MRE. These guys expend so much energy training outside of football. They got to eat this stuff, guys. This is this a little beef for you. Blankenship on the punt. And Wesley tracking down the short kick. 
Fourth time already, Army's inside Iowa State territory, down near the 30-yard line before the punter. Blankenship makes the tackle. Well, those MREs seem to have a lot of vitamins in them. Take a look at Wesley. He just makes a good cut. There were about four Iowa State Cyclones in position to tackle him, and he just slipped right between them, and then it was on to the safety. Well, Rod mentioned, Stacy, that you were signing autographs before for the Army women's basketball players. Now you're eating food down there. Well, like I told you guys, I'm a little bit hungry over here. These are meals ready to eat. You want to know why these guys have so much energy out there? They got meals ready to eat. Yeah. And I got one right here. I got some beef. <laughs> I got some cookies. An army. And they got a whole lot of yardage. Yeah, inside the 10 yard line, Murphy down to about the six before he's tackled by DeAndre Jackson. She says she had those meals down there. It's better be heated up. Is she actually eating? There she goes. Oh, I have they watched. Have watched. Hey, they, they told me it didn't taste so good. I mean, it's not Ruth's Chris, y'all, but. It's pretty good stuff. I got to close my mouth while I'm eating here, though. <laughs> Bobby Ross. These guys behind me want a little bit of this action, but you know what? That's, I'll share it with them, guys. That's getting it to a cadet. Bobby Ross said he ate one of those things here. before Sill. We got, hey, we even have nacho cheese. If you want Oriental food, if you want Mexican food, if you want Italian food, right now I got some good old American cooking. Like I told you, it's a little beef, a little bit of potatoes. I got crackers to dip in it if I need it. And then... I don't know why they gave me some nacho cheese sauce. It's a little high in fat, guys. You know, us uh, female sideline reporters try to watch the old weight over here. <laughs> but I'll take it, guys. These guys will take it. And our men and women overseas certainly appreciate all the stuff that we've got here. And not only those folks, guys, but all of those people in Katrina that suffered from Katrina. Dave, I'll send it back to you. I'm going to finish this. All right, enjoy, Stacey. I don't think I've ever seen her eat any of that stuff in the month now that we've been uh, all working together as a crew. Bobby Ross ate one of those at Fort Sill this summer. He told us he hasn't eaten one since. <laughs> well, Jacob Murphy with three catches for 60 yards. And Army is inside the 10 at the seven yard line, first down and goal. It'll be Jones. It'll be nothing. Maybe a half yard as he is dragged down by Curve and leaders. You guys talk about meals being ready to eat? <laughs> Let's see how resourceful Mrs. Dale Schumann is here. <laughs> oh, oh, she <laughs> always looked for a man in a uniform. <laughs> she could have opened that. Second down and goal. They got Beattie in the game at fullback. They run it behind him. But a nice play made by Robertson to get around VD and then make the tackle on Jones. And now it's third down and goal. Guys, Army's turned it over twice, but they're tied. They've had a couple of shots at big plays. Do they have to get a touchdown here? No, I think emotionally getting any points will be good for them. And I think Kevin Ross, the offensive coordinator, was thinking that way with two relatively conservative calls on first and second down. Don't blow it. Keep your options alive to get some points here. Yeah, we'll see if Army's ready to score here on third down and goal at the five. See if they go to Anderson. He's at the top of your screen. They've looked for him a lot tonight. And Domin is looking that way again. Instead, he's got a wide open Walter Hill touchdown. Army lead. Take a look at the fullback, Vidi. He's going to come over here, and he's going to attract three defenders. That's going to leave Walter Hill in the back of the end zone absolutely open. Now, look at Hill over here. Nobody around him. And they ran on the first and second down, got everybody influenced by that, come back with the play action, and the linebackers all sucked up once again. Both touchdowns, guys, have come on third down tonight for Army. Flag down, the extra point good, but again, a penalty flag in. Prior to the snap, number 62 of the offense, false start, but the five-yard penalty, we're still on the try. Guys, we're talking to the open about Iowa State, perhaps 
having a chance at an undefeated regular season. And they're struggling on the road here against Army, even though McCartney has said, hey, we're all business. This is a business trip this week. No tours, nothing set up for the players. Well, the question we asked was how good is Iowa State? They beat a very good Iowa team, and they get Nebraska next week. Were they looking ahead coming into this ballgame? Right now, Army's a little bit ahead of them, pushing it more physical. Five yard longer extra point try, and it's also good for Riley. Midway through the second quarter, Hill with the touchdown catch, and it is 14 to 7, Army leading Iowa State. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by new Bex Premier Life. Life beckons. And the Sharp Digital Imager Series. All the productivity you want. All the document security you need. Ah, the history so palpable here. You can taste it. Army hoping to taste victory for the first time this year. Leads number 22, Iowa State, 14-7. And a kick out of the end zone will put the Cyclones at their 20-yard line, down seven. Well, this year, Army is wearing a number 41 patch on their helmets, and there's also number 41 on the field. It's in honor of the late Glenn Davis, the Heisman Trophy winner in 1946. Davis died uh, earlier this year. One of three Heisman Trophy winners at Army. And Proud football program, won three national championships in the 40s. Davis in 46, Pete Dawkins won it in 58, Doc Blanchard in 1945. Meyer to the air, and he's got Blight, who is clean, but he hangs on to the ball. Deion Tarver let him off, but Blight did well just to get up after that hit. Well, Tarver is a former strong safety, and they moved him out the corner. He knows how to hit, he knows how to tackle. Just take a listen to this one. Tarver wants to go into artillery. I think he made a big bang right there. They say that he's one of the best tackles, a tackler has ever to play for Bobby Ross. That's what Coach Ross told us this week. Hicks on first down, tripped up in the backfield. Nice play by Tommy Ryan to get a hand in there and just swipe the leg out from under him. And Blythe, who is coming off a knee injury last February, a little bit uh, shaken up after that big hit. Well, right now, you know he's playing a service academy, but I'm not sure he could tell you it's Army. He's probably he's probably hearing some noises between those ears. That was a, a terrific shot he took. So with Blythe out of the game, Iowa State still goes with five wide receivers. And the pass is broken up by Tarver. Excellent coverage on R.J. Summerall. It's third and nine. Now, Tarver certainly has picked up on the empty backfield. Three-step drives the play. Does it much better here? just as he did a great job on that big hit just a couple of plays ago. Oh, look at the head snap around and the helmet's almost completely off. Life has to watch him grab his helmet to keep it on his head. Wow, chin strap up around his nose. Life back into the game. So far, the undersized DBs are doing a pretty good job in the oversized Iowa State wide receivers. Third and nine, Meyer forced out. And the pass is dropped at the 45-yard line. Flynn couldn't hang on to it. Hey, you know how in baseball they say hitting is contagious? Same thing in football. Take a look at what the undersized defensive line does. They come around on a stunt. And because that, they get that big Iowa State offensive line moving, and that means they can drive them back because they're already on the move. That forces Meyer out of the pocket. I think Meyer left the pocket too soon. I didn't think he had to get out there. He could have been patient, stayed in there. He ran into trouble by heading out that way. That's one thing McCarney told us, sir, a criticism of Meyer. Says there isn't much there as Wesley scoops it in at the 24-yard line is stacked up. He says that... Meyer doesn't make a lot of bad decisions, but would like him to be more decisive as a runner. And he did get out too soon there. Do we have another Freaky Friday here in West Point? We've had some good ones this year. Got another good one here tonight. Army leading by seven. Army takes over at its 24. 
Black Knights had an 80-yard drive earlier this quarter and lead Iowa State by seven. Jones trying to get to the outside. Nice cutback. Dragged out of the 30-yard line by Moser. It's a gain of about five yards or six. Second down and come four coming up for Army. You can see Army growing in confidence as they're moving the ball better. Their offensive coordinator, Kevin Ross, son of Bobby Ross, making the calls. Dad's taught him well over the years. And Kevin ran track at Navy, was also in the Marine Corps. And was a full-time competitive cyclist before he got into coaching. He's 40 years old and wants to stay at Army for the rest of his career. Corey Anderson, who's been very dangerous tonight for Army, gets out to the 39 and 9-yard game before Hicks makes the stop. Uh, his buddies from the Naval Academy give him grief all the time. He says they call him up and say, I can't believe you're an Army guy. Got me rooting for Army now. All that kind of good stuff our friends do with each other. Well, he was a Marine at the Naval Academy, and so he can relate a lot to what these Army cadets go through because there's a lot of, of slugging around through the woods when you're a Marine. Yeah, he was a part of Operation Desert Storm. Kevin Ross, what? First down of the 39. Option to Jones. White and the white jerseys. Robertson and Curve there for Iowa State. You know, and Kevin Ross and Bobby Ross, they want to get back to some option here at Army. I mean, they want to get back to something like what he had at Georgia Tech, you know, when they won that co-national championship. They ran a little option, they threw the ball. Right now, they don't have a lot of option because that's really not Dahlman's strength. But eventually, he will get back to running more option here at West Point. So they do here on second down from the 40. And Dahlman's pass about three yards shy of Hill in the dirt incomplete. Let's check in with Reese Davis for the first time tonight. Reese. What do you got coming up at halftime? And Dave, we've got a little bit coming up. We've got Mark May and Lou Holtz alongside. We'll tell you what kind of surprise USC might be in store for. We'll also look ahead to Monday night's game between Tennessee and LSU and get you up to date on the wild card rate. And I know Rodney will agree with me that USC is the best offense in college football we've ever seen. 55 points last year, 63 and 70 this year. Stay tuned. He's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lou is going the less popular way on that pick, guys. <laughs> USC, Oregon tomorrow. Oregon's averaging uh, 40 points per game. Pass that's almost picked off by Dobbins. Dobbins has already thrown two interceptions, but Dobbins could make it three, and Army will have to punt it away. Well, all, all I can say to my buddy Mark May is let's let USC get through the Pac-10 conference before we crown them best offense ever. A couple more games. Yeah, they got a tough game at Arizona State. They got Notre Dame on the road. By the way, I said Dobbins had two picks. He's thrown one. Jones on the halfback option through the other interception. Bomb ready to receive this Tolson punt. Four minutes remaining in the second quarter. Army by seven. And fair caught by Baum at the 28-yard line. So Iowa State, a team ranked 22nd in the country, getting ready for the Big 12 schedule, but perhaps a stumbling block in the way before conference play begins. In the form of Army, Dan McCarney in his 11th year, Big 12 Coach of the Year last year. Iowa State was the second most improved team in college football last year, but they got their hands full tonight against Army. With Rod Gilmore, Trevor Mattis, Stacey Dale Schumann, and Dave Pash, Iowa State with a first down as Blythe makes the catch out to the 40-yard line. Army outgaining Iowa State so far in this game. But the Cyclones get about 12 there in a the first down. And we have an injured Army player. Jason Schroeder who made the, uh, the hit there. Bobby Ross, as we mentioned, uh, had great success in both college and professional football before in the year 2000 deciding to call it quits he's back in college as are these guys chan gailey georgia dick dave wants it 0 3 bill callahan 3 and 0 this year june jones at hawaii pete carroll head coach with the jets and the patriots of course are doing a 
tremendous job at USC and Steve Spurrier back in college football at South Carolina. Begs the question, can NFL success for a head coach automatically translate to college success? And that is the focus of our Friday night debate as they tend to the injured player. It's Rob Davis, by the way, who is the injured player. Rob Davis for Army. So Trevor and Rod, our Friday night debate focuses on that question, guys. Can NFL success, or does NFL success, naturally mean college success for a head coach? Well, I think the answer to that question is obviously no. It doesn't automatically translate. You know, Pete Carroll is an exception to the rule. He's a guy who's made the adjustment to college football. And if the coaches in the NFL come down to college and they don't adjust, they won't be successful. What do you have to adjust to? Well, the first thing is you have less time with your players. Can you implement your offense or your defense in a shorter period of time? Because you're limited by the NCAA rules and time spent with players. And two, can you be more patient with younger men that you can't cut and you can't release and you got to deal with girlfriends and school and all that other kind of stuff and administrators? Well, Trevor's going to have to be patient because we got a sack. Cameron Craig gets to Meyer and knocks him down at the 30-yard line. All right, Trevor, you've been patient long enough. Go ahead. Well, I don't think it's automatic, but I think it does help. Like going to graduate school doesn't diminish your education in college. I think go coaching at the highest level at the NFL can only enhance your, your knowledge as a coach. The tolerances and margin for error in personal techniques and in game plan are very small there. Second, I think when a coach shows up like a Charlie Weiss with Super Bowl rings and can say to a recruit, look, if you want to run an NFL-style offense, I'm the one that got Tom Brady to two Super Bowl MVPs. I can show you how to do that in college as well. I think that helps. Screenplay goes nowhere as Coleman is drilled to the floor at the 31-yard line. That was a third down and 21 play. Barrett Scruggs on the hit. Rob, Rob Davis uh, did get up under his own power, so he is okay, by the way, for Army. Go ahead, Trev. But just to wrap that up, I think those things help. They don't guarantee success. However, that does not make you a better college coach than a Frank Beamer or a Bowden, Bobby Bowden. What it does is makes you a better college coach than you would have been had you not had that experience. I think you ate up my rebutter. <laughs> Correction, that last uh, play was a second down, guys. I'm so busy paying attention to you guys argue. Third down. And a check down, part of the 40. Oh, nice tackle in the open field as Coleman was trying to get away from Scruggs, and Scruggs' ankle grabbed him, and Iowa State's going to have to punt it away as we near the two-minute mark in the second quarter. Well, Trevor, I think there is a bump that you get in recruiting if you're an NFL guy and, come, and you come down to college. I think you do get that bump for a short period of time, but that's about it. And there's plenty of evidence out there that most coaches who come down to college have trouble adjusting to the time limitations and the rules and the administrative matters and they are not as successful. One thing that some college coaches will say is they like it when an NFL guy comes down who has not been in college for a while because he's not used to the recruiting either and college guys will use that as ammunition to try to keep them from going to play for a former NFL coach who's not a head coach in college. Bobby Ross has done it at both levels, trying to get it done again at Army, and might have an upset. He's got one so far with 2.08 to play in the second quarter. Back at Army. Black Knights lead Iowa State 14-7. Blankenship to punt it away. Iowa State has had trouble moving the football. The only points they have coming off a turnover. And running it bounces Wesley, and then he'll scoop it up. And it is tackled immediately. At the 17-yard line, Ryan Baum leading the charge for Iowa State. No return after a 42-yard boot. But Army Ball with 156 remaining in the second quarter. How about the other way, guys? How about the college coach who's successful going to the NFL? Didn't work for Steve Spurrier. Well, I think you don't jump from high school to the NFL unless you're Charlie Weiss. You know, I think it's just part of the education. College to the NFL. You mean. Yeah, well, no, from high school to the NFL. So you've got to be a college coach before you get there, is my point. Charlie Weiss, very successful offensive coordinator with New England. Two and one is head coach of Notre Dame. First down, Army at its 17-yard line. And Donna with a quick drop. He has Trimble. And just throws Moser out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Jeremy Trimble with his 10th catch of the year. His father, Stephen, was a defensive back in the NFL with Denver and Chicago. Jeremy's grandpa, Thomas Martin, was in the Air Force. 
And that's rubbed off. He's a tough guy. He's out there playing with a bad hip, a hip pointer. Didn't practice all week, but never mind. He's out there. Second down and seven of the Army 20. And they run Jones. Past the 30-yard line to the 32. About 12 yards there and a first down for Army. And Trevor, one of the nice things that they're doing offensively is they're making sure they get a hat on Tim Dobbins in the middle. Dobbins, really good middle linebacker, has not been able to go sideline to sideline and make as many tackles as he normally does. And Carlton Jones isn't, doesn't have the speed on the track to think that he'd be able to get outside and gain yardage like that, but nobody seems to be able to catch him at the point of attack. So first down to the 32. Army does have a couple of timeouts remaining. Play clock winding down two seconds. Jones on a cutback, and no play. Delay a game. This will be the fifth delay a game already this season. If that indeed is the call, it appears it is. Bobby Ross not happy with Dowin's inability to get the playoff. I'm not sure. Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense number seven, five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. I'm not sure anybody realizes how stunning this first half has been when you consider Iowa State knocking off an Iowa team and people are starting to believe that Iowa State's a team that could win the Big 12 North and here's Army undersized you know wiping them around the field a little bit here Iowa State didn't just beat Iowa held them to three points as that pass is caught along the sideline at the 41 yard line by Walter Hill a gain of 14 yards and very close to a first down and Rod this Army team won two games last year none the year before and look at Walter Hill. He's had a fantastic first half. He runs a perfect route there to get out of bounds. He had a great block on a screen run for a touchdown. Catches a touchdown pass. They're getting the extra effort from guys that they haven't gotten earlier this season. Look at the numbers for Dom the all-time leading passer now in Army history. Second down and one at the 41 of Army. Jones. First down and more. Out of bounds around the 47 yard line. Six more yards for Carlton Jones. Now, you know what I love about this is that Bobby Ross is not content to sit on this lead. Bobby Ross thinks he can drive down and get more points here. And for a team that only won two games last year and zero the year before, I think that's a very positive and very aggressive play calling. Isn't this right now about 90% coaching and game planning? I I'm stunned. I am stunned that you're looking out here and you're seeing an Iowa State team that whipped Iowa and they're being pushed around by Army. Jones gets three more to about the 47 yard line. Still two timeouts left for Army. We talked about how small Army is on their defensive line. We talked about how small they are offensive line. They don't have a 300 pound offensive lineman like everybody else has around the country. And we talked about all these these negatives, these detriments to, to winning with Bobby Ross. And then we said, but what are the positives? And he said, these kids are tough. They are disciplined. Everyone a leader. They will never quit. And when they lock onto their blocks, they will never drop off until the whistle. They'll do what you tell them. You tell them to run through a wall, they'll do it. Domin. Yulikowski to the 35-yard line. Moser finally makes the tackle. Army with four new starters on that offensive line playing only their third game together. They've been able to run the ball well, protect the quarterback, and it's the offense that's laying the blows as Moser is down now. You want to see two-minute clock management. Bobby Ross is running a little clinic here. He's run the ball, not burned up too much time, and he's thrown the ball down the middle to his tight end and still gets a first down, gets the clock stopped. Yeah, and the great thing about that is that Iowa State didn't expect it at all. Iowa State saw Army work the sidelines with sweeps in the running game and then quick passes to the sideline in the passing game, and they shifted outside, and at that very moment, Bobby Ross and his offensive coordinator, his son Kevin Ross, sends tight end Jared Ulikowski right up the middle into the void. Well, you figure right now, if you're Bobby Ross, you need about 10 more yards to really think about being in pretty safe field goal range. 56 seconds, got timeouts. You can use what you need out of your playbook to get yourself in that position. 
Terrific resume for Bobby Ross, graduate of Virginia Military Institute. And he played for a taskmaster, a guy by the name of John McKenna. And one of the things that Bobby likes to talk to his team about is he says football is not an escape for these guys. And it very well could be with all of the things that uh, these uh, student athletes deal with on a regular basis. And there have been two uh, former student athletes from Army who recently were killed in Afghanistan. A hockey player by the name of Derek Hines and a former baseball player by the name of Steve Wright both killed in Afghanistan. There's usually 150 to 200 former football players in Iraq and Afghanistan at one time or another. And these players have to think about that on a daily basis. Bobby Ross has done a good job to get them to focus on football when they're here. A screen pass to Jones that's broken up by Tim Dobbins. Again, he's thinking, I only need a few yards to be in field goal range. It's been a great drive for Army in the last two minutes here. He would take three points. He might take a shot down the field, but he knows with about eight or ten yards, he'll have a shot at a field goal. Army had a drive that started at the 20 earlier. March all the way down, got a touchdown. This current drive started at the 17. We're on play number eight from the 36 of Iowa State. Down to throw. And the pass is broken up nicely. Anderson, the intended receiver, DeAndre Jackson, with the pass breakup. And in case you are wondering, the last time Army defeated a ranked team, 33 years ago, against Air Force back in 1972. Last time they beat a ranked team was 1972. I guess we won't talk about 1979 when they knocked off a Stanford team that <coughs> I had something to do with. Yeah, Cal Davis. <laughs> oh, cut me open. Hey, Cal Davis is, is almost Division I AA. Don't be me. Third down and 10 at the 36. Pump fake down and flushed out a little bit. Broken up, punched out of there nicely by Paris. And there is a penalty flag down. Yeah, and the... Right at the quarterback's feet, the flag was thrown, but it might be against the Army for holding here. Josh Dobby, the intended receiver downfield. It is holding on Army. And Nathan Collier, left tackle, was blocking Jason Behrman. Behrman got inside. Top of your screen, number 61. That's Collier, and here comes Behrman, 84. And that's where the hold occurs, and I like that hold, Rod, because he didn't allow his quarterback to take a shot, which he would have had Behrman come free. I don't like it. Number 61 of the offense with a hold. That penalty is refused. Fourth down. Nathan Collier, the left tackle who is starting in this game. He's from Stephenville, Texas. So fourth down and ten, and it's like Army is going to go for it. Yeah, they, they, Iowa State took the penalty because they didn't believe Army could kick a field goal from 53. So what the heck, you might as well go for it on fourth down if you're Bobby Ross. Iowa State does have three timeouts, and they'll have about 20 seconds or so with the football if it can stop Army here. And they run Jones and they surprise Iowa State. And Jones has the first down to the 21-yard line. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And a timeout called by Army, one left. How do you make that call? Here you see they do a nice job of influencing Berryman up the field. They open it up. And Jones gets the first down, and boy, the Army's in business now. They've passed Trevor Maddich, Rod Gilmore, Stacey Dale, Schumann. Guys, when the Army players walk in uniform to the locker room to get into their football outfits yesterday, we all kind of looked at each other and said, man, these guys are small, but they are playing more physical right now than Iowa State. They wanted to get Carlton Jones more involved, and he's averaging five yards a carry. They're protecting the quarterback. That means they're more physical right now. Well, that's good coaching. When you know that you've got to get the ball to a guy that you need to have touch it and get him in space, and you do it, that's good coaching. Sun Tzu in the art of war. Know your enemy's weaknesses, attack him there. Know your enemy's strengths, avoid him there. And they're using Iowa State's weaknesses against them, and that weakness right now is mental. They don't think Army can do this to him. Dan McCartney told us this week that, according to Earl Bruce, former Iowa State coach, they talked earlier 
this week that Bobby Ross is the most prepared head coach in college football. And his players are the most prepared in college football. We might be seeing that illustrated here tonight. And then throwing that into the dirt might be grounding. It is flag down. Not outside the tackle box. I don't even think that pass got to the line of scrimmage. Well, he and might have been outside, but he didn't get yeah. it beyond the yeah. line of scrimmage. He's got to get it beyond the line of scrimmage. He had a screen play, I mean, a shovel pass he was trying to get, and he didn't want to throw it. It's got to get through the neutral zone. It's got to get beyond the line of scrimmage, exactly. you got to like Iowa State's defensive front and how they responded. They've been burned on a couple of runs when they rushed the passer too aggressively. This time they slowed down a bit, read the play. Yeah, intentional grounding, number seven of the offense. The penalty is a loss of down at the spot of the pass. That is a huge penalty. It takes them out of range. And take a look here. This time they don't come flying up the field. Take a look. They're reading the play. They see that it's not a pass, and therefore their weakness became their strength. Okay, line of scrimmage, a 21-yard line. Where does the ball hit? The ball doesn't get to the 21. That is grounded. Yep. It looked like they were trying to run a little shovel pass there, but it was defended well. So the loss of down. And Army had a timeout left, but they're letting the clock run down. And then they finally call for time with three seconds left there. Because the clock was running on the penalty, as soon as they put the ball down, they started the clock again. I don't think Army realized that. Well, Army was busy arguing the call. And they lost track of what was happening with the clock and the spotting of the ball. Unusual for a Bobby Ross coach team. And they had the ball down at about the 21-yard line. That's a, about a 38-yard field goal. Now they're out of field goal range because of the penalty. Well, they're going to try about a 48-yarder, 47-yarder here. He hit a 49-yarder against Baylor. You know, guys, we were driving over here. Trevor said something. He said, you know, Iowa State's had two weeks off. They've been reading all of the great press about beating interstate rival Iowa. Trev, you said it, that Army was going to give Iowa State a game. Rod and I, as usual, both kind of laugh, but, uh, but you're right. Wait, wait, no, wait, but speak that, for yourself. But no. that meshes with what Rod said. Because, Rod, you mentioned the sandwich game. This one comes between Iowa and next week at Nebraska. They called this one the biggest game of the season for Iowa State. They knocked out Drew Tate, and they got this thing done. Austin Flynn. With a touchdown catch in this game, had one in that game. LaMarcus Hicks, an interception return for a touchdown. This wasn't close at halftime, and Iowa State just pounded it into the ground in the second half and beat Iowa 23-3. And that man was concerned about that. He kept telling his team all day yesterday, this is a business trip. We're not here to see the sights. That's right. This is one of the great sightseeing venues in America to come and take a tour of West Point, take a tour of the, the old Post Chapel, take a tour of the graveyard, the cemetery where George Custer is buried, see where the Corps of Cadets live. and what they, It's amazing up here. And he said, nope, we're not taking any of those tours. We want to keep focused. And so far, the focus has been on the Army side. Army is going to try a 48-yard field goal. Joe Riley had a 49-yarder. Last week against Baylor, and his father recently was diagnosed with liver cancer. Uh, he is doing well, received treatment, and is doing well. Riley's had to deal with that, along with all of the responsibilities and pressures of being a student athlete at the United States Military Academy. Now he's got the pressure on national TV of trying to kick a field goal to push the lead to 10 at halftime. I mean, we thought Ohio Pitt was surprising two weeks ago. This is a bigger surprise. Yeah, I, I'd say so. We're talking about a Big 12 team, knocked off a Big 10 team, rated in the top 25, projected to win the Big 12 North by many, and they are struggling here. No wins two years ago, two last year, and the 19-game losing streak as another timeout is called here. One timeout remaining for Dan McCarty. Well, you can't use them in the second half. Might as well burn them up here in the first half. Well, McCarty's done an excellent job at Iowa State. Only 13 wins his first five years there. They stuck with him. He now has the second longest tenure in the Big 12 behind Bill Snyder at Kansas State. And he has gone to four bowl games in the last five years. Was the coach of the year last year. They have not won. Well, if you count last year as a conference title, they tied for the division championship. You see the numbers since that 13 and 42 start 
Iowa State has not won a conference title of any kind in football since 1912. You look at that record, you see the first five seasons, and you wonder, well, how did he survive it? And that wouldn't happen today. I mean, the schools just aren't that patient now. But he also survived it because of a big upset over Iowa that kept his job back in 1998. He's done very well against Iowa, winning six of the last eight. 48-yarder, a little bit of win behind Joe Riley. Try to push the Army lead to 10. Just short. No good. And so it's a seven-point lead at halftime. Army has never lost a night game at Mikey Stadium. Three and oh. Trying to go four and oh. If it can hang on to the seven-point lead. Close to being a ten-point lead with a field goal short. 14-7, Bobby Ross's team in front, and Ross is standing by with Stacy. Coach Ross, how have you managed to stifle this Cyclone team, 22nd ranked in the country? Well, we're just playing hard right now, Stacy, and that's the way we have to play. Please with our offense. We blew an opportunity down here with the penalty, however, and that, that, that cost us. But we're playing hard, playing good defense. We lost a couple of key players, though, real bad injuries. So we're in a little bit of trouble there. So hopefully we can come back in the second half. You said the running game would be critical. What's your assessment of the running game? I think it's picked up some. I'm pleased with it right now. I think we can still run better in the second half. Hopefully we will be able to do that. All right, thanks, Coach. Back to you, Dave. All right, Stacy. Army, a team that averages eight points per game this At the very top of the show, we mentioned, would Iowa State be looking ahead to the Big 12 schedule? And that to be a champion, your stars had to shine everywhere. And that the Cyclones were taking on more than a football team. It started well, Iowa State with two picks, and then a touchdown, and led 7-0. But Army came right back. And when you wear these uniforms, you know you're going to have perseverance. And Army leads at halftime, 14-7. And General George C. Marshall says, I want an officer for a secret and dangerous mission. I want a West Point football player. Dave Pash, Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddox back in West Point. And guys, Army, 232 yards total offense against not only a ranked Iowa State team, but a team that routed a top 10 Iowa squad two weeks ago and is as hot as anybody in college football the last eight games going seven and one during that span. Well, take a look at what you're talking about there. You're talking about an Iowa State team that was like USC, Texas, Louisville, just really hot. But in the first half of this ball game, Army played with a lot more character. They had bad things happen at the beginning with two interceptions. They oh. rebounded from that oh, and they boom. played physical football. They did. Oh, and to me, a huge that. story is Army's defense. Last oh, week against oh, top 10 boom. Iowa, Iowa State rushed for 100 and 69 yards so far in this first half 27 yards for Iowa State's rushing game Army on defense is stuffing well, you see that and you say how in the world can they come up with only 27 yards rushing but look at Army they've picked up 80 yards rushing great running out of the backfield by Carlton Jones a guy they had to get loose and they have and time of possession pretty close and Zach Dominic, quarterback, has really been the linchpin in this. He's only completed 12 passes in the first half, but eight of those 12 have gone for first downs or touchdowns. Last time Army beat a ranked team back in the 70s against Air Force. Iowa State will receive. And start with a football here in the second half. Jackson and Flynn back to receive the kick. It'll be Jackson taking it up. And Jackson starts Iowa State's half on an excellent return. Inside Army territory, finally horse collared out of play at the 43. Let's well, check in with Stacey Dale Schumann, who had a chance to talk with Dan McCartney. Coach McCartney, how did you address your players at the half down a touchdown to Army? Well, we're lucky we're only down seven points, to be honest with you, Stacey. We're real lucky. They outplayed us. They outcoached us. They played with more tenacity. Uh, they were more hungry. We've got to come back and do a much better job second half. Make adjustments, but I want to see this team play a lot harder than we did in the first half. We appreciate it, Coach. Dave. And, you know, tenacity, I think, is the key. Iowa State's bigger and stronger, but Army bites into them and won't turn them loose. McCartney warned us this week that 
Army will play physical football. They have so far. And they do it again here as they are able to track down Stevie Hicks. Cameron Craig leading away. And no gain of a play there for Hicks. You can bet that McCarney told his players at halftime he wanted to see them come out and be physical. He wanted to see them punch guys in the mouth. He wanted to see them stay after it. Maybe some adjustments, but really he wants to see them play with more energy, more passion. He wants, he wants to see them match Army. One of the Iowa State coaches referred to Army as a blue-collar team. We have seen that illustrated here tonight. Second and ten from the 43. They try Meyer, and again, no running room. It didn't work at all for Hicks. It doesn't work there for Meyer as he's taken down by Brandon Thompson. Trevor, that defensive line is not that quick. They're still getting penetration, though. Yeah, they're not that quick, but they're playing lower. If you're not quick, then your pad level, your first step, and your technique will are what you need to win the day. And right now, Army's defensive line is playing lower, and they've got a better first step. Iowa State's defensive line averages right around 260 pounds. Iowa State's right around 300 pounds. But it's Army that's been more physical. Third down and long. And Meyer sacked for the fourth time today. Cameron Craig with his second one of the game. Forget the 57-yard kick return. Three and out for Iowa State. Oh, and that is all about good coverage in the secondary. He's going to want to come up here. But look how this man is walled off. Meyer can't find him. You've got great coverage. He's looking there. Can't find his guy. What do you get now? Sack. Blankenship on to boot it away as Iowa State wastes an excellent kickoff return. Wesley waiting for it. Leveled immediately at the 14-yard line. For Singleton on the special team, stop no return after a 41-yard punt. Well, Iowa State's offensive line and defensive line are looting, losing the battle. Army in the trenches are winning. Take a look at the size advantage now. It's almost 40 pounds per man. But that time, Cameron Craig, even though he's smaller, had a quick first step on an inside stunt, and it confused the blockers. And it doesn't matter how big you are if you're on the run. And four sacks by Army. Meanwhile, Army has not given up a sack, and Army's got a small offensive line. Iowa State not a particularly huge O line, but there's a play made by Sean Moorhead tracking down Carlton Jones, a gain of one on the play. I mentioned the tail of the tape for Army's defensive line, Army's offensive line, only seven pounds heavier on average than Iowa State's defensive line. And, you know, we talk about offensive linemen getting bigger all the time. We see 300-pounders all over the country. Not one here. Second down and nine. And again, four new starters up there. And Pete Beers, starting at center, was a guard last year. So no starters returning at one position. And here they open up a hole again for Carlton Jones. Off the right side, up to the 27-yard line. 12-yard game. But one of the reasons this offensive line is so small is because they're mostly freshmen and sophomores. Take a look at how they block down and then pull around. That's Evans, number 58, that has the nice block. He's not a big guy, so he uses balance and he uses quickness. And offensive line coach Stan Brock has done a terrific job in getting these guys to play within the abilities of their smaller bodies. 74 yards for Jones. Guys have done a great job on Jason Berryman. The defensive end, number 84, for Iowa State. Jones again. This time, nowhere to run to the ball's out, and Iowa State has it at the 32. Jones lost it. Moser comes up with it. That's the third takeaway for the Iowa State defense tonight, and the 10th already this season. Well, they had five takeaways against Iowa last week. All of their points came from those turnovers last week. In the middle of your screen now, there's just nowhere to go. And the ball looks like it just got punched out from behind. Most of the Iowa State defense was all around that play. Didn't fool anybody. And Carlton Jones is saying, yep, I'm accountable for that. It got punched out. But Army retains possession. In How did that fight. happen? Moser yeah. had the ball. There were no Army players around any and, of the Iowa State players. And remember, there is no replay. Right. Not tonight, not in this game. Army's an independent, and there is no replay agreement. Now watch when the ball comes out. It's out there. Both knees are up. That is definitely a fumble, but no replay here tonight. And again, there were three Iowa State players. The ball was dead, and then Army came in and took it away. Dominant Lane broke it up. Nearly picked off by DeAndre Jackson. 
Let's take another look at this here. Clearly, the play is stopped. Moser's got possession. But who's that diving in there? That's a sneak attack. That was uh, Nathan Collier, the left tackle, who snuck in there. Yeah, he snuck in there and took the ball away. But again, when, when you're on the ball and the knee's down, the play's over. If you've you got possession have, of the football, you if you have, have possession, have possession of it. It, it looked like he did, though. But again, no replay because we've got an independent school as the host, and there was no agreement between these two schools to use replay. Third and six at the 32. So a break for Arnie. Dominus, the blitz is not picked up, and Alvin Bowen, the linebacker, sacks Dominus for the first time. And now Army will have to punt it away. Well, this is a big stop for Iowa State. Army in the late second half was having their way with them, and now they come in in this first drive of the third quarter, and they stop them. Owen Tolson out of punt it away to Baum. Iowa State would have had the ball right around the 30-yard line. They come after it and they block it. They might get it at the 30 anyway. Actually, they might even be better. They're going to let it bounce. And Army will touch it at the 22-yard line, blocked by Caleb Berg, and Iowa State will take over inside the Army 25. They line up three blockers way wide. That means the Army blockers or, or protectors have to shift out and if all three of them don't shift out at the same angle and at the same rate somebody comes clean in this case Caleb Burke the inside guy he comes unblocked look there's no army cadet anywhere near him. so Berg comes up with a big block in Iowa State even though it was on the other end of what appeared to be a questionable call by the officials gets it anyway with even better field position on the block punt. But you see McCarney turning up the intensity, making the decision to go after that punt. Trying to inject a little bit more life in his team. Let's take a look again at the fumble by Jones. It's clearly a fumble. Again, we do not have instant replay tonight. It's out there, knocked out by Matt Robertson. And there it appears that Moser has it and has control. But now yeah. the last second, Collier jumps in there and takes it away. Nope, I don't think he had possession of it because as you saw in that replay, he reached back to his right side. Even though he was over the ball, he reached back to his right side like he was reaching for something. There you see uh, the number of plays reviewed so far in games that have instant replay. We don't tonight. 39 plays overturned. Most coaches have said that they are in favor of it now that we've had it a few games into the season. You guys like it? I think it's terrific, even though sometimes it extends games and sometimes maddeningly so. It's important to make sure that the calls are made correctly on the field, especially with so much at stake with rankings and bowls and the BCS. Uh, philosophically, I'm, I'm not crazy about it because I think it makes it too much like the professional game. And that's bad because? Because it's not the professional game. Well, they could use a Frisbee instead of a football. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> that would make it even more different from the professional game. <laughs> First down of the 23 of Army. Three receivers in the game. Army showing blitz. It's picked up. And Meyer has a wide open Davis inside the 10. Down to the six-yard line. Campbell on the tackle. And there's big John Davis, the leading receiver last year for Iowa State, with 48 catches. That's a 16-yard pickup. Very strong throw by Meyer, but a tremendous job by Davis to come back to the ball. He came back about five yards to pick it up. He came back towards Meyer. A tremendous read by Meyer. He saw the blitz come from his left. He knew his protection had it picked up. That's the direction he went with the ball. They marked it at the seven, first down and goal. Iowa State's touchdown came after an interception, trying to score after a block punt. Inside run and play to Coleman, and he lost the ball at the four-yard line. I think they're going to say that his knee was down before the ball came out, and that is the call, even though Iowa State uh, came up with a fumble anyway. So it will stay Cyclone football, second down and goal. 
Again, no instant replay here tonight. And Iowa State came up with a fumble anyway. And, oh, ball was out. It looked like the ball was moving before the knee hit the ground. But Iowa State recovered it anyway. Well, it just makes you wish you had replay. Don't you think? <laughs> I agree with you. Look. <laughs> they didn't agree on it. <laughs> yeah, the and coaches we, we, did. We can debate replay on another Friday night. Not right now. Second, <laughs> second down and goal at the four. Cook is in the backfield. Here's Meyer. Going for the fade to Blythe. Well covered. Two defenders down there. Campbell and Stiff. It'll bring up third down and goal. These defensive backs for Army have really done a good job tonight. Well, you know, I think across the country, you see more zone coverage now around the end zone than you used to see. There used to be the concept of, well, you got to go man to man down here around the goal line, and you're going to bring pressure. Now there's more. We're going to spread five or six guys around the end zone, play zone, and try to bring pressure with them. And, Rod, this is a difference in Army's philosophy. Last year, they were heavily manned. Now, they're more heavily zoned this year. Third down and goal. Davis and Blythe at the top of your screen. Meyer. Oh, has a wide-open man. Coleman, touchdown. Iowa State, great play call. And Iowa State has a chance to tie the game. Really simple play here. You simply fake it to your fullback. Nobody takes him. You turn around and give it to him. That's Coleman. Faked it to him and just let him turn around and throw it to him. Now this time it was man coverage. Army actually changed up, and they didn't account for it. Culbertson on for the PAT. One touchdown scored off an interception. Another scored after a blocked punt. And we are tied again. 8.59 to play in the third quarter. Coleman with his first touchdown of the season. Iowa State has tied it up. Dan McCartney testing the character of his football team at halftime. Iowa State responds. They block a punt, and then a touchdown catch for Greg Coleman. And we're even again at 14, with under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. The championship teams don't always have to blow out people every week to win. Sometimes you have to overcome things. And Iowa State, if they're going to be a Big 12 North champion, they're going to have to overcome adversity and show some character. That's what they need. Now, people talk about USC. USC is not going to go undefeated by beating everybody by 65 points. They're going to have a tough game, and they had it last year, and USC overcame those tough, tough games. Iowa State has to do that tonight. Yelp kicking it away. Wesley waiting for it at the 10. Ball might have got held up in the wind a little bit. And up to the 25 yard line. And they're going to mark it down to the 22. Wesley. And we talked about Iowa State being contender in the Big 12 North again this year, tied for the division championship last year. And only one loss uh, by a Big 12 North team. That was Missouri against the pretty underrated New Mexico's Lobo team. There you see those standings out there. A lot of people believe Iowa State is the odds-on favorite to win the North. And should we just go ahead and say Texas? It's Texas in the South this year? Well, can Mac Brown beat Oklahoma the way the Sooners are playing, you'd think, but you never know. Jones on the toss, out to about the 26-yard line for about four yards. Nick Leaders on the tackle for Iowa State. Well, Iowa State doesn't play Texas or Oklahoma this year, and they were happy about that when the preseason schedule was announced, but I'm sure now they wish they did play Oklahoma because this might be the year that Oklahoma's vulnerable for them to beat them. You know, they, I would never go looking for a Bob Stoops team. If they're not on the schedule, just be happy with it. Bob Stoops played at Iowa when McCartney was an assistant coach under Hayden Fry. Second and seven. Jones again running the same side. Pretty shifty moves, and he's got the first down up around the 34-yard line. Well, this is an example of that small offensive line doing what they can. Right guard, Matt Wisner, itty-bitty guy, number 70, look at him pull. And when he gets there, he doesn't kick out. He actually hooks his man, and that allows Jones to get the corner. You can pull with those guys because they are smaller. So many of the bigger linemen today can't do much more than zone block. You, you don't get them out in space. 19 touches for Jones, 124 yards so far in this game. First down at the 34-yard line. Dominant throw. 
has Beattie, and he gets about eight yards to the 42. Matt Roberts in on the tackle. And number 70 right guard, Matt Weisner, again, undersized, thought he would be a long snapper. Take a look. He'll get beat on the initial charge. But then look what he does. He comes back and gets one extra push, and that allows Dahman to get the pass off. Well, that would make Vince Lombardi proud. He and Red Blake, both of them, legendary coaches at Army, using smaller linemen in the history of Army. Red Blake, the all-time leader in wins as a coach at Army, 18 years. They run Jones again. And he's going to be about a yard shy of the first down of the 43-yard line, tackled by Berryman. First time we've called his name since the early going. You see sweeps, you see tosses. You don't see that with most programs these days. You know, we don't see the Green Bay Packers sweep from yesteryear that Vince Lombardi made famous anymore. No, because defenses are so fast now. You know, led by Miami and Florida State, that's one of the reasons that the wishbone went out of favor, because defenses got too fast. Now, Berryman has been shut down. They did a great job. Army did against Matthias Kimanuka, perhaps the best defensive end in the country, even though Boston College won that game 44-7. Kimanuka only had one tackle. And Jones appears to be short of the first down on that third down carry. Robertson with another tackle. Robertson, the leading tackler for Iowa State coming into this game. And we'll see if they measure here. Uh, it's clearly a yard shy, so it's fourth down. And Army is uh, going to go for it here on fourth down. Do you agree with this decision, guy? Nah, uh, you know something? I think maybe they're trying to pull him offside. If you miss it here, and this is really risky, you miss it, you set up Iowa State for a short field and a score. I can't believe Bobby Ross would go for it here and risk that right now. They're going three tight ends. You see where the yellow line is. They've got to be about a half yard to get that. Everybody up on the line for Iowa State. Army almost had it. And now we've got the delay of game. It looked like a, a player for Iowa State stepped into the neutral zone. Had they snapped it, they would have had him offside. Yeah, see, I, I didn't believe Bobby Ross would take that kind of a risk at this point in the ballgame as we take a look at the rock back there of the tight end. But they had, it looked like, the left defensive tackle nudge his way into the neutral zone. Had they snapped it right there, it would have been offside. Now, it looked like it, but the center, Pete Beer, is a senior, and he didn't think it was a, a set deal where he wanted to risk taking that snap. Tolson on to punt it away. From his 22, has to go down and get the low snap. Last punt was blocked. This one he gets away. Ball will let it bounce, and it goes out of bounds inside the 30-yard line at the 28. Dan McCartney's team has bounced back to tie the game at 14, over five minutes remaining in the third quarter. ESPN2's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Subaru, a world leader in all-wheel technology. Think, feel, drive, Subaru. Okay. And KFC's new flavor station. Be the boss. Choose your sauce at KFC. I have to wonder if Stevie Hicks might be banged up, the starting tailback for Iowa State. Coleman's in there a lot as Meyer rolls out, and the ball is picked off. Caleb Campbell comes up with the interception, and Army takes over at the Iowa State 40-yard line. Well, Meyer telegraphed it. Caleb Campbell read it all the way and was driving on the play even before the ball was released. Watch to the right side of your screen. Ball probably should have been caught. A little bit high, but Campbell was coming the entire time. Getting in position over there to help make a play. That's hustle and extra determination. Second interception thrown by Meyer. The cadets love it here at West Point. Army takes over at the Iowa State 40. Dahman with a play action. Now he's rolling out. And the pass is too wide for Anderson to pull it in. Well, they're not going to beat Jackson on short routes tonight. And he's gobbled up every short route they've run by him. Now he's been beaten 
in the past couple of weeks on some deep balls. First game, he was beaten deep a couple times, an 80-yarder and 56-yarder. But you don't beat him on short routes. He's just, he just jumps on that stuff. The two teams combined this half have about 40 yards of total offense. The difference right now in this half is the block punt eventually turned into a touchdown by Iowa State. Second and ten. Jones on the delay, has room. First down and more. Nice open field tackle by Robertson. May have saved a 20-yard gain. Instead, it's a 12-yard pick. What a block what, by Walter Hill. And once again, take a look what Berryman does. He comes inside, and Collier takes him inside. You see number 84 there, and there's no contain on the outside. Once again, rather than try to drive him off the ball, let's see where they're going, help him go that way, and run where they ain't. And Walter Hill did a nice job of blocking the contain, so Carlton Jones could go over 100 yards rushing for the night. He ran for a school record, 1,269 yards. Well, actually, that wasn't a school record. The 17 touchdowns he had last year was a school record. Here he is persevering and breaking tackles to the 19 for about nine yards. Steve Paris eventually not, in the tackle. They're not supposed to be doing this. You're talking about a back who only weighs about 185, 180 pounds, and he's running hard inside, running through the tackle of Jason Berriman. And once again, we saw Evans absolutely pancake his man, number 52, Brent Curve Bay. Curve sorry. Jones has led the team in rushing all four years at Army. Doing it again tonight. Here he is on second down and one. Very close to the first down to the 18-yard line. Appears to have it. As we hit the four-minute mark in the third quarter. Bayer, uh, Jason Berryman with the tackle. And again, look at the tail of the tape of the Army offensive line against the Iowa State defensive line. You wouldn't know the difference if you took the jerseys off. Absolutely. Now, if you're Bobby Ross, think along with him. They've been pounding. He might take a shot on first down. He's got his guy, Anderson, who's been good in one-on-one -on -one situations. May only get that one now. Anderson at the bottom of your screen. Instead, it's Jones. Cuts it back into the teeth of the defense and right into Jason Berryman. Trevor, the reason it looked like there was a shot on first down there was Iowa State decided to bring extra pressure on first down to stop the run, and they singled up on Anderson. And I thought Ross might be anticipating McCartney doing that and going ahead and throwing the ball. I think that's exactly what happened down there, and I think Bobby Ross right now was thinking, ah, we had an opportunity if we'd have checked out. Because this is a school since 1996 in the Commander-in-Chief Trophy Series. 2-14 and 14 against Air Force and Navy combined. And here they are playing with Iowa State as you Lukowski takes it down to the one-yard line. And a penalty flag down. Well-designed play. You see Ulikowski out there. Watch the face mask at the end right here. Clearly. And when you turn the head, it should be flagrant on Dobbins there. You know why he grabbed his face mask? Because he knew half the distance to the goal was going to be just a few inches, and he wanted to make sure he didn't get into the end zone because that's where he was headed. Army has 19 first downs. Iowa State only nine. Penalty flag down. And short of the goal line is Scott Wesley. But again, a flag down. Prior to the snap, false start, number 84 of the offense. That's five-yard penalty. It's still first down. At the end of the first half, Army had a penalty that may have cost them a crack at three points. They don't want three here. Oh, and Bobby Ross talked about discipline and not having pre-snap penalties. That time, Tim Dunn just couldn't hold it there long enough. Fifth penalty on Bobby Ross's team, only three on Iowa State. Big difference between five and a half yards and a half yard. So first and goal now from the five. Toss to Jones. Not much running room there on the short side, and Jones is brought down by Dobbins at the line of scrimmage. No game. 
you, know, you always say, well, wait a minute. With all that room to the left, why do you run to the short side? But what they were trying to do was to get Iowa State to place their defense, more numbers, to the wide side of the field and then run back short. The way they did that was by formation. They sent two wide receivers to the wide side of the field, but only two defenders went out there. Take a look at this. Only four guys out there total. They expected more white jerseys to go that direction, right? They go with the same formation here on second down. And again, they run with the short side with Jones. And he nice through the defense down to the one-yard line. I tell you one thing. He is one tough little guy. I mean, we talked to him yesterday, and he's really only about 180, 185. They have him listed about 10 pounds heavier. And you look at him, and you just can't believe he could run inside. But he does. He does, because he's got great quickness. That's one thing Bobby Ross told us, is that he's got good evade, and he's got good quickness. And so in the hole among traffic, he is as fast as anybody. Third and goal, they go with three tight ends. It'll be Wesley. And he is short. So now what do you do? Do you take the three points or do you go for it? This time, I think you go. I think he decided on third down he was going to go for it, which is why he ran that play to get closer on fourth down. I think you take your shot now because you're 14-14 late in the third and you got a chance to do something special. And if they fail, the way their defense has been playing, Iowa State has got the ball inside their own one and Army will get another chance in good field position. You see that shot of Bobby Ross? I think he wants this one. Fourth down and goal from the one. Three tight ends. Wesley again. Touchdown, Army! Second touchdown tonight for Wesley, and Army is back in front. And they go to the right side. Tight ends over there, Justin Larson, 80, and Tim Dunn, 84, the guy who had the penalty on him. And you know who was inside of that was number 33, Mike Vitti. And Bobby Ross says, I'll run behind those three guys any day of the week. Wiley on for the extra point. Twenty-one to fourteen, Army by seven. Closing seconds of the third quarter. The cadets going wild with good reason here on Friday night, the first Friday night game in the 82-year history of Mikey Stadium, named after the founder of Army football back in 1890, Dennis Mikey. As you see the numbers, yards by quarter, only 11 for Iowa State. And time of possession heavily favoring Army in this second half. Army football guys started because of a challenge by the Navy. Back in 1890, they ended up having a championship run three in a row in the mid-40s and trying to get their first win here in 2005. And they're trying to take down DeAndre Jackson, his breaking tackle. And Jackson finally run out of play around the 32-yard line by Chris Grievous. Second terrific kick return by Iowa State in this half. Last time they went three and out. He uses his speed. Jackson understands that he's a lot faster than the guys he's facing right now. He never lets up. He forces the issue with his speed to outrun angles. So Iowa State, which has had the short field for most of the night, that's part of the reason they only have 139 yards of total offense. 57-yard kick return last time. The result was a three and out. 68-yard return this time by Jackson. Let's see what the Cyclones do here. Down seven late in the third. And Coleman remains in the game with Hicks out. Davis along the sideline. Down to the 25. A gain of seven on the play. And Brett Meyer, the sophomore quarterback captain, throwing two picks tonight. One of uh, his worst games as a collegiate starter so far anyway, but the night is not over. He's still a young quarterback, but he's grown so much in just that short year that he's been at the helm. His accuracy is much better now than it was at the beginning of last season. They go five wide here trying to get the playoff before the quarter ends. They do. 
Fire across the middle, caught at the 20-yard line by Flynn, who had the touchdown catch in the first half, and that will take us to the gun here sounding at the end of the third quarter in West Point. Could it be? Could Army, which didn't win a game two years ago and only two wins last year, knock off number 22, Iowa State? Stick around and find out. Army 21, Iowa State 14. As we go to the fourth quarter, Army has not defeated a ranked opponent since 1972. And special teams keeping Iowa State in this game in the second half. Two returns of 68 and 57 yards by Jackson as Kane, the kicker, kicked it to the wrong guy. Was supposed to kick it to Flynn. Only has one return for 13 yards. And here goes Greg Coleman down to the 10-yard line. We have not seen a lot of Stevie Hicks. Don't know whether he's injured or not. But Coleman is getting it done. He already has a touchdown in this game. Luke Pell on the tackle for Army. Iowa State has changed up. They've gone a little bit more hurry up the last three plays to change the pace. A little bit of a sense of urgency. This is the first time they've huddled in about three or four plays. Well, Army, a much smaller defense. The fourth quarter is when you would think they would get tired. Iowa State gunning for that. Meyer out of the gun here on second and short. Meyer change of the play. See the play clock, upper left-hand corner of your screen. It's at five seconds right now. Meyer with a quick drop. And the pass is tipped, and it is picked off again. Deion Tarver. That's the third interception today for Army. All by the defensive backs. And most, if not all, of those interceptions have come off of tipped balls. Is the ball too hot? Is it too hot for Flynn to handle? He comes back. It's not Flynn. Tarver picks it up. It looks like maybe it was Blythe. Was it Blythe? No. It wasn't Blythe who lost that ball. It was Walter Nickel, Nickel there. Yeah. I wonder, guys, if that pass wasn't intended for Nickel. I, I'm not sure it was. I think it was intended for Blythe, who was in the end zone. Instead, it was broken up by... Meyer's own man, and so Army takes over now, leading by seven at its four-yard line. Wesley on the carry. Out to about the six for a couple of yards to give Army a little bit more breathing room. Well, Cyclones got it going early on, got off to a great start. Got their touchdown early to go up 7-0 with Greg Coleman, and then Army started fighting back. They did. They came back and, and ended up taking the lead. They ended up going up 14-7. Now 21-14 in the fourth quarter. Is it Friday night? We've got some wild games the last few weeks. Second and eight. Dominic has time. And he throws another interception. This time it's picked off by DeAndre Jackson. That's three picks thrown tonight by Army and two by the quarterback, Dominic. Trevor, when you throw the fade route, you must throw it to the sideline. You have to get it away. The corner is inside. He's playing inside, so if the ball is inside, he's going to pick it off. Not enough air. Look at this thing. He's inside. Ball's inside. Ball's got to be out there. We have seen some pretty good receiving, though, by defensive backs, haven't we? Some pretty good catches made on those interceptions. Uh, great play by Jackson. Jackson's having a really good night. Two picks and two touchdowns for Donovan. First down of the 27 of Army. Coleman remains in the game and hammers into the secondary down to the 20 for about seven yards. But see, field position is the worst thing about that yeah, interception, no, no. but the second worst thing is that Army's defense is back on the field. And right now, Iowa State is starting to assert themselves on the offensive line. They're starting to get more push than they've had in the first three quarters. Second down and four coming up for Iowa State. The Cyclones were down here about 30 seconds ago. Turned it over at the five-yard line. Army turned it right back over. Here go the Cyclones, second and fourth at 21. Again, they run Coleman between the tackles. He's going to be a couple of yards shy of the first down, though. It'll bring up third down. Iowa State went to two tight ends, balancing things out, extra beef in there, and then ran right at Army. Kind of a how tough are you play. Yeah, they've got a, a defensive tackle in there, Seth Lotz, that only weighs about 239 pounds. That is very small. Now, he's held up well, but now's the time that they would start to get tired. And again, Coleman in the game for Stevie Hicks. 
Iowa State three out of nine on third down. Pass play, and it's batted down at the line. What a play by Barrett Scruggs. And now a decision for Dan McCartney. What to do here on fourth down and two? It would be about a 37-yard field goal. Well, you have to play like you know you're going to get back down here. As you watch Scruggs come off the corner, he gets cut, but that does not stop him. Oh, that's a great play. Yeah, he's one of those little, tenacious guys. He's only six feet tall. About 209 pounds, but look at him get in the air. Yeah, I think you ought to kick the field goal here because you are the ranked team and you have to act like you know you'll get back down here and score again. Iowa State going for it on fourth and two. Play fake. Meyer. Again, everybody's covered. Meyer's got to do something with it. It'll be Army ball as Cameron Craig takes down Meyer. Now a penalty flag is down. There is a penalty flag down, though, at the 30-yard line. Thrown right at the feet of the quarterback, Meyer. That's the third, third sack for Cameron Craig if it stands. Let's find out. We have an incidental face mask. Number 54, the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. I think it was Case and Schroeder. Actually, it was Cameron Craig who was the man who made the tackle on the play. So that, that's the man that had the face mask. And you can see him there chasing down Meyer. Right there, that's where it is. Oh, boy. And that's a huge break for Iowa State because that would have been Army ball right at that's that spot. That's an incidental face mask. Number 54 of the defense. That's five yards from the previous spot. The yardage results in a first down. So, guys, instead of an 11-yard loss and Army leading the ball at the 30, it'll be Iowa State ball inside the 15-yard line. It, it was Cameron Craig, 94, on the face mask. That is that is a penalty that changes the complexion of the game. That play had nothing going for Iowa State. Meyer is trying to buy time to get something, and there's nothing there. And now he's bailed out. He's going down, and he's bailed out by the incidental face mask here. But because he was going down, Craig's arm was going for a tackle on his chest, and Meyer put his head down at that level right at the moment that Cameron Craig's hand got there. Craig was held before that. We saw that on the replay, but no call there. Army's given Iowa State a lot of chances, but the Cyclones uh, have made the most of them on occasion. As Meyer takes off at the 10 and stumbles and falls right around the first down marker at the four-yard line. So it'll bring up, depending on where they mark it, either second and short or first and goal from the four. Early fourth quarter and what... Couldn't end up being one of the surprises, if not the surprise, in college football in 2005. Army, team that won two games last year, zero the year before that. Leading number 22, Iowa State. 309 total yards for Army to 178 for Iowa State. And this is a Cyclone team that two weeks ago beat Iowa 23-3. to Iowa was ranked in the top 10 at that time. Iowa State's only lost one game in its last eight going back to last year. That was against Missouri in the regular season finale in a close game. And they came in probably looking ahead to Nebraska just a little bit next week. A very hot team. One of the hottest in America. You put them right up there with USC, Texas, and Louisville over the last eight games. And they're down to an Army team that is very small, very undersized. Cook is in the backfield because Hicks, as we've been told, has a hip strain. And doesn't matter. Cook is going to take it into the end zone for the Iowa State touchdown. And again, the penalty by Cameron Craig haunts Army as Iowa State now has a chance to tie the game with a PAT. Wow, think about the change there. You went from a fourth down where Iowa State was not going to get it, a seven-point lead for Army. They were going to take possession of the ball, and instead, you now have a 21, likely 21 tie. Culbertson ties the game at 21 with 11.07 to play. It was fourth down. Meyer had nowhere to go. Everybody covered downfield, running around 10 yards in the backfield. He sacked, but a face mask on Craig. Iowa State gets it back, and a touchdown by Cook to tie the game. As you look at the eyes of fire for Army head coach Bobby Ross, you think he understands the significance of this game? 
Ross four wins shy of 100 career college wins entering this one tonight against number 22 Iowa State Ross has done it at every level college pro now trying to get it done at Army in his second year and he's tied with Iowa State regardless of the outcome here even if they don't beat a ranked opponent for the first time since 1972 well, he wants a win for his guys because they've been getting a little closer, a little bit better, and he wants that. And no coach likes to have a game-changing call. They hate that. Five possessions for Iowa State this half, guys, and four of them have started in Army territory, two resulting in touchdown. Yoke's kick. Very good. And Army will have to start at the 20-yard line. Go back to the studio, check in with Reese Davis. All right, guys, this is Cal in New Mexico State, and I want my good friend Rod Gilmore to pay close attention to this kickoff return trickeration from Hal Mummy, and Chris Williams is gone as the Aggies score on the kickoff return. See, Rodney, it doesn't always happen for Cal on kickoff return. Sometimes it happens to Cal, 13-10. <laughs> oh, just a vague reference to the 1982 Cal Stanford game with the play and the five laterals, and Dwight Garner was down. <laughs> I thought I saw a trombone out there. And here comes a reverse, the second one that Army has run tonight. Trimble, and he actually, Anderson gets to about the 26-yard line for six yards. Berryman, again, showing his speed. A defensive end tracks down Anderson. Well, speaking of trickeration. We saw a reverse on that Cal game, and here's another one. And Kevin Ross, who's the son of head coach Bobby Ross, the offensive coordinator here, Naval Academy graduate, made that call, and I think it's a good one because it gets the defense thinking about something other than driving up the middle. See that average eight and a half points per game, 21 tonight. They were 112th in the country coming into this game. We talked with Kevin Ross this week. He says, I do not want to leave Army. I want to be here for the rest of my career. Jones getting the carry and spun down a line of scrimmage by Tim Dobbins. The ball came out, but he was down at the 26th, no gain of the play. Now, this is a, a huge play for Army, not just because of the first down, but because of the defense. Look at that last sequence. The defense stopped Iowa State, but an interception gave the ball back to Iowa State immediately. Then they stop them again on downs, but a penalty gives them a first down. And then Iowa State gets the ball and scores a touchdown. That defense needs some rest. And dad and son talking it over about the play to call here. Kevin, the son, working with his father. Army only two third down conversions in this game. And they run it to the short side and losing yardage on the play is Jones. Pushed out by Matt Robertson who's had a heck of a game for Iowa State tonight. And so Army's going to have to punt it away here on fourth down. Dan McCarney told Stacey Dale Schumann at halftime that it's about character here in the second half. And both teams have showed a ton of it since intermission. Tolson with his fourth punt of the game. Bomb is waiting for it. And he fumbles the snap. Tolson looking like he's going to throw it, and it's caught for the first down. Army maintains possession. How about that by Tolson? Now, there is a penalty down. I, the official just dropped it after the ball was caught, and you know he's thinking, well, yep. they had illegal men downfield. Yep. Because it's a punt. It's an automatic call just about. That's right. On the punt, interior lineman can take off down the field before the ball's kicked. But the minute it turned into a pass play, they were now offensive linemen caught downfield. So the correct call there by this ACC crew, Jack Childress, the referee. Receivers downfield, number 55 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. At least they get a punt again, though, guys, instead of having Iowa State get the ball about the 15-yard line. Watch all the guys take off here. They're going to all get going here. They're all beyond the line of scrimmage. He's got the ball there. It's an automatic call. <laughs> still fun to watch as oh, yeah. uh, Ricky Lay caught it. But at least a chance at redemption here for Tolson, who dropped the snap. And he's already had one punt block here tonight. Gets that one away. A liner. Baum at midfield. Breaks a tackle. Baum on the loose. Gets a block. But a flag down. Block in the back. Baum all the way to about the 11, but it's coming back. Brandon Hunley with a block in the back at the 32-yard line of Army. And he didn't have to do it. I think Baum was already beyond him. He didn't have to block in the back. When he sees this one on film, look at this. He doesn't need to do it. Baum has the speed, and he's going to get the corner. 
And special teams has been the big catalyst for Iowa State in this game. Big kickoff returns, big punt returns that put them in position to be able to overcome. Army's grinding it out. And they almost had another one there. That's a, a huge break for Army. You have an Army team that won only two games last season facing the number, two 20, number 22 team in the country. You ask yourself, how in the world, how, do, how can they hang in there? It's been a strange night. Iowa State coming off that huge win over interstate rival Iowa two weeks ago. A lot of people saying that Iowa State could run the table based on its schedule, not playing Texas, not playing Oklahoma. But they're struggling with Army as Flynn gets leveled as he catches it at the 48-yard line by Ray Stiff. And Stiff got hurt on that play. But hops to his feet, and he's okay, and the fans love it here in West Point. Let's check in with Stacey Dale Schumann. Hey guys, Coach McCarney will not appreciate that last penalty. This is a very disciplined team. Every day after the game, they sit down and look at all of the penalties as a measure of discipline to remind the players we can't have that. That'll be a point of emphasis tomorrow, guys. Yeah, he'll put it up on the PowerPoint, show what the penalty is, who it was on, and the reason for it. Second and 13. Meyer with time. Blythe wide open. Inside the 25-yard line is Blythe. Stiff eventually on the tackle at the 23-yard line. A very nice job by Meyer of looking off the safety, Rob Davis. He looked off to the right side. Davis vacated the middle, and Meyer came back to the middle to throw the ball to Blythe. Look at him. He's looking off here to his right side. Now he waits and comes back, waiting for his guy over the middle, and he's got him. This is the time of game here, the time of game where maybe Army starts to think, okay, here we go, but can they shut down Iowa State? Not on that play. As Coleman takes off to about the 13-yard line, very close to the first down. Well, it's now that size matters, and the Iowa State offensive line has been grinding on that much smaller Army defensive front, and they look completely different now in the fourth quarter than they did in the first three. Holes like that did not open up earlier in this game, and I think that last sequence where they kept getting the ball back to Iowa State, where the defense couldn't get off the field, has made a difference. But again, field position key this half, six Cyclone possessions in the half. Five have started in Army territory. And this is going to be short, so second down and one coming up as we've hit the eight-minute mark. Only seven yards this quarter for Army Iowa State on pace for its best quarter of the night in terms of total offense, 65 yards. Well, it goes back to that stretch, Trevor. You mentioned it. You're lining up to get the ball back on the fourth down. You get the face mask penalty. And instead of being up, now you have a first down for Iowa State. They get the touchdown, and you're tied. And now they're back on the field in your territory. Cook, who scored the game-tying touchdown, is in the game and gets it on second and one. First down and more as Cook is spilled at the six-yard line. Tackled by Scruggs, and Iowa State will have first down and goal from the six. Trevor, I, I tend to agree with you. It's not so much the size that's having an impact. It's that four or five-minute stretch where the Army defense was on the field the entire time. They never got a break. And emotionally, they got the rug pulled out twice on the interception and then on that penalty. First and goal. Cook again. Down to the three-yard line. Second and goal coming up. Schroed on the tackle. You call these situations sudden change. Right now, you're about to get the ball back for your offense. It's a face mask. It puts the Iowa State back on the field with the first down instead of the ball going to Iowa State. Sudden change. Defense has to stay on the field instead of coming off. Iowa State got a touchdown to tie. Here they are in the doorstep again. Second down and goal for three. Cook stays in the game. Cook again up the middle. And Cook powers his way home. Touchdown. Iowa State and the Cyclones are back on top. Well, Army has nine defenders up to stop the run. Nine. But look at the surge by the offensive line. They drive the left side of the Army defensive front all the way back to the goal line. Went behind the center, Stevenson in the left guard, Pence. And now the extra point try by Culbertson. 
And it's a seven-point lead for Iowa State. First time the Cyclones have led in this football game. Seven-point lead right now for Dan McCartney's team. Middle of the fourth quarter in West Point. ESPN 2's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Kia Motors. Kia, the power to surprise. The West Point Museum at the United States Military Academy where Army trails Iowa State. First time Iowa State has led since the early going of the game when it was 7-0. Well, Monday night, a makeup game, so to speak. Tennessee and LSU scheduled to play tomorrow. Because of uh, the Hurricanes, they have moved it to a 7.30 Eastern start on ESPN2. What should be an excellent game between LSU and Tennessee. LSU having a tough time getting a home game. Getting one play. They're looking forward to that Monday. Had a play at Arizona State last weekend. That game was originally scheduled for Baton Rouge. And Army will start at the 20-yard line. They did have an 80-yard drive in the first half. Well, guys, we've talked a lot about character and perseverance tonight. And that embodies uh, Army football going back to the three national championships won in the mid-40s and three Heisman Trophy winners, Blanchard, Dawkins, and the late Glenn Davis. Can Army bounce back after Iowa State has taken a seven-point lead? A Mr. Inside, a Mr. Outside, two of them winning two of those uh, three Heisman Trophies. You see highlighted there. Carlton Jones in the backfield. See the 41 on the field. That's an honor of the late Davis. And Jones runs right in to Sean Moorhead and loses a couple of yards of the play. Sports Center coming up next. A reminder here on ESPN2. Could Rafael Palmero be done in Baltimore? We'll tell you about that. And USC's first big test taken on Oregon tomorrow. Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger going at it as the Patriots meet the Steelers in the NFL this weekend. That USC-Oregon game, everybody expects USC to hang up 70 points on everyone this season. I think that's unrealistic. Second down and 12 at the 18-yard line. Dominic with the play fake. Has a man. And near the marker is Anderson. He's going to be about a couple of yards shy of the first down. Robertson on the tackle, so it brings a third down. Well, this is where we see the leadership and tenacity of Army. This institution is not just an academic institution, but a leadership institution. And every single player on that field is a leader, even the freshman. And Bobby Ross, with his military background, will be summoning all of that because that right now is the only thing Army's got going for it at this point in the game. Third down and two. Jones has the first down. Remember, guys, Bobby Ross took this job in part because his father was appointed to West Point, but could not attend Army because of the Great Depression. His dad had to work. And he wanted to honor his father by taking on the head coaching post here at Army. Well, even when he was in the NFL, he was thinking about Army at some point, if he could get there. He left the, the Detroit Lions for health reasons, had two blood clots in his leg, one above his knee. Scared him to death. And so he decided to step down midway through that 2000 season. Dobby with the catch at the 40-yard line. Comes up a couple of yards shy of the first down. Tackled by Jackson. And very much a part of this job at West Point is the mission. This is ultimately to prepare young men for battle. And Bobby Ross, with his understanding of the military, knows that lessons learned on the field of, of play are lessons of leadership that on other fields on other days, as MacArthur said, will lead to victory. And regardless of the outcome, what a coaching job tonight by Ross. And credit McCartney, too, for getting his team to bounce back here in the second half. Jones cuts it back, eludes Curve. And then finally grabbed the ankles at the 46, or the 44, rather, but he does get the first down. So move the sticks for Army. When Bobby Ross left the Detroit Lions, a lot of people thought he was just burned out from football. They didn't understand at the time that he had a serious health issue and that his father, in fact, had had his legs amputated. And Bobby Ross was concerned about that happening to him. And he has since gotten healthy, and he's back coaching. And first down for Ross's team at the Army 44. Jones again runs into a defender. This time, Carper on block makes the tackle. 
And right now, as you look at the clock, heading down to four minutes, Army is not a quick strike offense. They do not have the ability, as well as other teams, to get the ball back with a minute to go and still have a chance to get some big plays to get into scoring position. This drive is the drive. Look for screen passes. They need to get Jones in space with the ball. Kevin Ross, the offensive coordinator in his second season at Army, calling the plays here on second and 11. Here comes a blitz, Dominic Trouble, and can't hit Jones, trying to get rid of it. And Jones couldn't track it down, covered by Moorhead. Well, Iowa State was also thinking pressure and cover the screen pass as well. Jones is the guy who has to touch the ball for them in space. Third down 11, if you don't get it, guys, are you punting or you still have three timeouts and plenty of time in the game? I think they might have to go for it because of the point Trevor made. Their offense is not a quick strike when think two plays here. They don't have to get all 11 right now, but they do need to get closer. But the way their defense has played, it hasn't really had a chance at a long field. All of Iowa State's possession have been on a short field. Third down and 11 at the Army 43. Dahman has time and has a first down Trimble. It's all on the spot. At the 45-yard line, it appears that the spot favors Army for the first down. They will measure, but it looks like he got it. And what a gutsy play. Now they're not going to measure. It is a first down. Trimble, bad hip, hasn't practiced all week long. He's the guy. He hangs in there, limps off the field now, but makes the big third down catch. And the advantage of Army players. They're smaller, they're not as fast, but they're disciplined that he made that catch just over the first down line. From the 46 of Iowa State, Wesley is back into the game, replacing Jones at tailback. And Domin on the delay. Hands for Wesley. Inside the 40 to the 39 for seven yards. And again, we see Army moving the ball on Iowa State. Tackle by Tim Dobbins. And Jonathan Conn that time took Jason Merriman, defensive end, inside. Another terrific block by this undersized offensive line. I think Kevin Ross, the offensive coordinator, will want to keep the pressure on. He doesn't have to get it all here. He can keep running clock. He can run the ball now. He's got about two, two downs to pick up the first down here. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. Second down, Jones back into the game, and guess who's in front of him? Big Mike Vitti. And they try to run behind Vitti, but too many defenders around the football. A loss of a couple on the play. Curve there first as Jones is taken down in the backfield. Don't forget Sports Center coming up next when we're done here on ESPN2. Well, Army's been running to the short side of the field all game long. Iowa State is now stacking that up. Well, you're having trouble with the screen pass now. You still have your big target in Ulikowski, the tight end. Now you're in four down territory, huh? Yep. Third down and five, and they're two for two on third down this drop. Dahman finds a man at the 30-yard line. First down, it's Walter Hill who's had maybe the best game of his career here tonight. Well, he does a good job of getting inside and showing his quarterback his numbers right there. And that ball's behind him. But he shows him the numbers to give him the target, a big target. And Dahman puts it there. And Hill's not even supposed to be in there today. Bruce Brown sprained a hamstring on Wednesday in practice, and so Hill has filled in admirably. A touchdown for Hill, some great blocks, and a big-time catch there on third down. So first down from the 29 of Iowa State. And Jones, the inside run, gets maybe a couple. Dragged down from behind by Curve. Okay, we know Army wants to be deliberate, but they are still getting single coverage with Corey Anderson. And Anderson is the guy who got behind both corners in the first quarter twice, and they couldn't get the ball to him. They still have that option if they want to try it here. 13th play of an Army drive that started at its 20. There's Anderson up top. See if they go that way on second down. Play fake. Dahman, there's the screen. Didn't know if Jones was looking for it or not. He breaks a Dobbins tackle, and he's out of play around the 22-yard line. Jones didn't know whether he had the ball or whether the ball was supposed to be thrown to him there, it looked like. He got about five yards of the play. It'll bring up third and short. Talk about determination. He got hit by Tim Dobbins, as you see the third down conversion before this drive. Nothing going. Now, three for three. 
but Dobbins, 55 pounds heavier and faster, he still manages to get over to Jones, but Jones gets yards after the catch, just as you see the graphic there. If they convert this third down, uh, Bobby Ross might want to start thinking about a timeout or two. 42 seconds left for the ball at the 22-yard line of Iowa State. They are three for three on third down in this drop. Play fake. Dahman hit as he delivers. And it is incomplete, almost caught miraculously by Anderson. Even though he was well covered down there by LaMarcus Hicks. So now it's fourth down. It, it's not the comeback routes and the out routes. Those corners are jumping on those routes. You have to just send him deep. That's a jump ball, and Hicks almost picked it off. And it almost was caught by Anderson. That would have been an incredible catch. Yeah, Anderson does a great job of reaching back and making sure that at least this will not be an interception. Had his hands on it, but couldn't pull it in. So fourth down. The game on the line right here. From the 22 of Iowa State, they got to get three yards. And they run Jones. And Iowa State is not fooled. Berryman takes down the running back, and Iowa State takes over. What about the call, guys? I am surprised. It worked in the first half, but I would have thought, given their choices of throwing the ball to Jones out of the backfield, Ulikowski, a big target, I would have thought they would have taken the option of throwing the ball. But then again, Carlton Jones is their number one playmaker. And on fourth down in this kind of a situation, they said, look, if we're going to fail, we're going to fail with our best. And Jason Berryman, their best defensive lineman, she uses his speed, gets up the field, and makes the play. Army does have three timeouts remaining. They're going to stop the run and then call timeouts quickly. Here's Cook. Tackle made at the 23, and a timeout is called, so only... Four seconds go off the clock there. Two timeouts remaining for Army. That was a 15-play, six-and-a-half-minute drive by Bobby Ross. It comes up empty with the running play called on fourth down and three. It lost a couple of yards. Dan McCartney trying to knock off Bobby Ross, leading by seven late in the fourth. Second and eight coming up for Iowa State, leading by seven. Two timeouts remaining for Army. Cook on the carry, wrapped up at the 25. Another timeout called. Four more seconds off the clock. One timeout remaining for Army. Key play. Turning point of the game. Earlier, fourth down. Didn't look like Meyer was going to get it. Did it, Trey? No, Cameron Craig didn't even know he had the face mask. Meyer ducked his head. And then Ryan Cook comes right back. Gets the touchdown that tied up the ball game. And everything changed with that penalty for the face mask because Army would have had the ball and a seven-point lead. Instead, tie ball game. Yeah, it was fourth down and two. Meyer was running around back at his 30. He was going to go down. And Craig, as Trev said, went in with the one hand. The head ducked. He grazed the mask. And it was an incidental face mask call, but it was enough to give Iowa State the first down, and they eventually score. And Bobby Ross was livid over the call. It was a legitimate call, but he didn't like the call in the situation. And also, there was a hold on that play. Uh, Craig, who committed the foul, was held, but that wasn't called. And you know that Bobby Ross was giving the official a lot of grief over the call that he made that changed the game. Now, guys, if you're Dan McCarney here, it is third down and seven. Do you put it up and try to get the first down? Myers picked, thrown two picks today. Or do you just keep it on the ground, be conservative with uh, only 22 seconds no, left of the game? I, I think you run the football. Get as much time off the clock as you can. Think about your fourth down. You have your choices. You can punt it if you want. You can run back, take a safety, or snap it out if you want to take a safety. Any of those things. But I don't think you take the risk of throwing the football. Yeah, I agree, Rod. Right now, run the ball, punt it out, and then see if Army can hit balls down the field in the passing game, which they have not yet done today. Third and seven of the 25. One timeout left for Army. And they are going to throw. Oh, well, Meyer's just going to go down. And it did take uh, about two or three more seconds off the clock than the previous running plays. So Army calls its final timeout. 17 seconds left and a punting situation for McCartney's block. Well, give McCartney some credit for what he did with his team at halftime. Talk about character, challenging his team, getting them back in the second half to do things. And again, if you're going to win championships, you're not going to dominate every ball game. You're going to have to win some games ugly. And this one, the ugly part was the mistakes that Iowa State capitalized on. 
Army had Iowa State on the ropes. Then they made a few mistakes in terms of that penalty that we just saw, in terms of uh, interception just prior to that penalty. Different things that Iowa State capitalized on, and Army was not able to overcome it, and now they're down to one last gasp. Only 229 yards of total offense tonight for Iowa State. And as you said, Rod, you're going to have some stumbling blocks along the way if you're going to try to run the table, and, but you got to win those tough games on the road. And two weeks ago, they beat Iowa. Everybody was talking about Iowa State as a sleeper team. Maybe they read their press too much. And they've come back from seven down here in the second half to take a seven-point lead. They're punting now on fourth down with 17 seconds left. Army's coming after. There's no return man right now for Army. Flags down. And the punt out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. This can be critical where they mark it here. The official racing up. And he's still going. Yeah, he finally good. stops at the 46 yard line. That'd be excellent field position. Would give Army a legitimate shot at the end zone here with 10 seconds left, depending on what the penalty flag is. It's against Iowa State. I'd decline yeah, that, wouldn't yeah. you? Take the ball at the 46. You've got a shot at a Hail Mary or possibly two plays. No, but illegal procedure, if it, depending on which kind of illegal procedure, is prior to the snap, and they may not get that choice. If it was prior to the snap. Problem is, time doesn't go back on the clock, so if it is prior to the snap, this hurts Army. This does not help Army here. So even though it's a penalty, it actually ends up hurting Army if it was before the snap. If it's a dead ball foul, then they have to re-kick it. An illegal formation. But that's not Less what the call is. Less seven players on the line of scrimmage against the kicking team. That penalty is refused. It's first down. So there you go. And Army will have a shot here at the 46-yard line of Iowa State. And Dominic Rimmer does not have a great arm. Do you go one play here to the sideline, guys? Well, they have no timeouts. Even to the sideline is, is questionable unless you go to the short side. They could throw an out to the short side and get five, seven, maybe ten yards out of it and still have one more play. Well, we'll see if Bobby Ross elects to take a shot deep into the end zone. And Don't forget Army is out of timeout, so the only way they could stop it was with a first down, but then they got to get up there and try to spike it. I don't know if they'll have time to do that. No, it's got to be to the sideline or into the end zone. It's got to be end zone now. And Dominic under pressure, and he is sacked. Sean Moorhead sacks him, and that will do it. Iowa State survives in West Point. <laughs> Terrific effort by Army. He was trying to buy some time to take a shot down the field and gets pushed out of the pocket. No time to set his feet. He was waiting for the three receivers at the bottom of the screen to get over the goal line. He's looking to his left. He's got three guys. He tries to buy that time, you said, Rod. And just as he turns to uncork it, he gets sacked. Nathan Collier could not hold off Sean Moorhead. Dan McCartney's team survives. They will stay undefeated. Coming back in the second half to beat Army on the road 28 to 21. This game has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Rod Gilmore, Trevor Maddich, and Stacey Dale Schumann, Dave Pash, for our entire ESPN2 crew, saying so long.